Hey, everybody. Welcome to episode 27 of Power Bombshells. We're just two broads talking about the wrestling that we watch. Uh, I have, of course, my co-host, Mel, and then we have a special guest this week, uh, Doug, who is, if you've watched this uh, show before, you've heard me talk about Doug a few times, and uh, I actually got my start in podcasting. <laughs> on Doug's show, the, stup the Stupid and Delicious podcast. And it was funny because it was just supposed to be us just basically uh, talking about our local promotion. And I never had intentions of starting my own podcast. <laughs> and uh, never knew when we were just hanging out, talking for hours and going, Doug listening to me going on tangents about stuff, <laughs> that mm -hmm. it would turn into our whole other show. So welcome, Doug. <laughs> Hi. Uh, how How's everybody? Doing good. good. Glad to have you. I'm exhausted. <laughs> I was cleaning my house for six hours with professional organizers, but I'm excited to be here talking about good. wrestling and specifically what y'all have me on here for yeah. is a uh, bit of disability history and experience. I'm all for uh, educating on that. Um, so, yeah, I'm excited. Yeah, I'm glad we we're finally gonna do, we're gonna do a little show and we're gonna do a little let's more serious talk. We've talked about it in the past. That's yeah, we, this is a yeah, we've talked about it a couple of times and I had mentioned before like that I wanted Doug, like I didn't want to speak for Doug and I wanted yeah. him to come on and share his experience. So we finally got schedules to work for everybody, and that's actually why we're recording a little bit a day earlier than we normally do, but that's fine because it works for everybody. <laughs> yep. it really, it really won't even matter to the people watching. You guys <laughs> won't even notice. They're, they're off they follow the time. They don't worry about what day it is. Yeah. We, I haven't had a set day for Sad Podcast in years. <laughs> yeah, people I listening. Think it's that that way. Way. Yeah. So I, it's like surprise. Did I like accidentally? Did did we not put his banner in here? Um, I have it. Hold on. Oh wait! I'm like, wait. We have so many banners in here that we gotta we gotta clean this stuff up. It's not Keep here. Every week we say, "Oh wait, did it not save it?" Because I had it. Where's it at? Oh my gosh! I'm so. I mean, y'all can go look at the banner. At I promise podcast, you that we are per so somewhat professionals, but we'll see. We so are total we'll professionals. Oh, yeah. oh you know, know what? I don't think no. I clicked. I don't think I clicked add banner. <laughs> If you look that <laughs> podcast up, our logo and banner were designed by It's a Work Photography and Graphic Design. She's awesome. She's one of our best wrestling friends. Um, haven't seen her in very long, but shout out to her. There nice, we go. Nice plug. Some, Excellent plug. She that made was. some killer logos for us. So there is a sad podcast. That's where I got my start. And Doug can give you a little background on how. Uh, and I'm actually wearing... The stupid and delicious merch is kind of hard to see, but I yeah. have it. <laughs> so. We did we did one run of shirts and uh yeah. <laughs> um so basically sad podcast is how we abbreviate it because it's way too long to say the stupid and delicious <laughs> wrestling podcast every it time. It absolutely is. Yeah. Um so sad podcast started, it was me and three friends. I had actually been a wrestling fan growing up. And then I had a 14 year hiatus. Um, so I, I don't, I think I stopped watching because I started doing wheelchair sports and all my buddies there were like, let's watch college football. Let's watch the NBA. So I didn't have time on top of everything else I did to keep up with wrestling. And it was like, okay, whatever. Well, I went through a bad breakup and a former friend of mine was like, I have alcohol and I have wrestling and I'm coming over. <laughs> um, they showed me SummerSlam 2014 and I, I was back in hundred percent, hundred percent back. in. Um, so then that was right before that was probably three or four months before the CM Punk expose podcast dropped that Thanksgiving. When he mm -hmm. went on Cabana's show and just oh, tore WWE okay. to shreds. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And after that, my friends were kind of like, do y'all want to do a podcast? And I was yeah. like, yeah, why not? Like, let's do this. So w our favorite match was 
is unfortunately a little bit hard to watch now because a particular monster is in it. However, it's the Young Bucks versus Candice LeRae and uh, and a partner who shall not be and named. a very very shady person. <laughs> um, but it's a fantastic match from PWG Eleven. If you've never seen it, I highly encourage you go look it up. Um, it's a guerrilla warfare anything goes match. It's it's fantastic. It's one of those matches I use to bring new people into wrestling. Nice. So that's where we got the name because during that match, a bag of thumbtacks is a bag of gummy bears. And of course, Excalibur <laughs> and Kevin Steen are on commentary and Excalibur's like selling it like only Excalibur can. <laughs> and Kevin Steen is just like, gummy bears are stupid and delicious. <laughs> so that's where the name came from. Um, as things progressed, friends moved on, things happened, people got other opportunities, and then it became myself and my wife, uh, as our podcast. And it honestly, I think it got more fun at that point because yeah. honestly, my wife gives zero shits. She will ask anybody to be on our show. That's she awesome. doesn't care what people think of what we say. No, she's the show got awesome. so much more entertaining. Yes, um, that's true. And Did like, she like wrestling. So she had never watched it before dating me, and I sort of dragged her into it. She is pretty much AEW indie only now. Uh, we don't really touch WWE product anymore because it was so bad there for a while. That's what happened to us too. <laughs> but um, like she'll go to shows and like yeah. give out to people and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Cat's um, fun. Cat's fun to go to wrestling shows with. <laughs> oh yeah. Cat will let people hear it. Nice. Oh yeah. Um, She's hilarious. Lovely. She doesn't care. She gets super into it too. It's yeah. lovely. And there's like <laughs> fantastic. There are several professional pictures of cat catching wrestlers because they didn't tell us to move and so <laughs> she got dove on um uh -huh. there's a really cute picture of her from one of the clips aew uses for jd drake where he wrestled jeff cobb and you can see sam and our other friends and myself and my wife and my wife is just sitting there like this so like <laughs> happy about the match um it's super cute that's fantastic but she's also like we got adam brooks i still get starstruck she doesn't care so we no, got adam that... brooks once we got matt sidal once um so we've gotten some pretty cool opportunities with yeah. sad podcast um but sam and i kind of connected through one of the friends i started sad podcast with and then when that <laughs> neither friend one of us bailed, are friends with that friend that yeah when anymore. that friend bailed <laughs> sam and i were still tight and going to pwx so we're like right yeah we're just gonna keep hanging out and not worry about that person yeah um <laughs> yeah it's, it's worked out much better for us <laughs> yes exactly um and when our local show used to run a two-night tournament we started doing interviews after night one that we deemed the slumber party. And I think the second year, Sam and her sister and some other people started joining and yeah. it became like our yearly tradition to stay up till four in the morning recording. Yeah. Uh, those <laughs> shows got wild. Yeah, they, did. Um, they did. I'm surprised we never got a hotel noise report. <laughs> yeah, uh, it got, yeah, it was loud. There was stories that were told cause we'd have wrestlers drop in and that yeah. were on the show and they'd come hang out and give their versions of stuff. And they and basically like just, they also time, wanted to hear what we thought stories. about. Yeah. And yeah. They had wrestling stories and non wrestling stories too. Cause we had the, um, the stuff. With if us. you've ever heard of Billy Brash, he was telling us stories <laughs> about like that's, that's when he story. used to be a professional fireman. Yeah. Um, we've had the ugly ducklings who were just on GCW last week. Mm -hmm. They had coach Mikey. We heard all about coach Mikey's, mom like mama galino yes like, fantastic did. stuff like yes. just hanging out shooting the shit and that's what <laughs> our show always kind of prided itself on mm -hmm. and it's why we never had a problem getting wrestlers because yeah. they're like wait you mean we barely talk about wrestling i'm like yeah we we aren't here to like star rate your match or whatever <laughs> nice. we that's are gonna nice tell sometimes. you the truth 
like if your match sucked we're not gonna lie even if we love you we're gonna say we love you but that match was terrible yeah um <laughs> nice and we used to be respected for that that may have shifted here lately but that's fine um <laughs> We ticked off well, one some particular people, I would say person. Some people got their feelings hurt about it. So yeah, yeah. Some people need oh, we, to get over it because we've heard a lot of feelings. I'm blocked by several of our local people wow. who couldn't handle I'm the heat. Sorry that their feels were hurt. <laughs> That's very. One bad. was honestly yeah. slightly playful, but I think he didn't realize that. Um, the. The old gimmick stealer, Sam. It was oh, yeah. slightly playful with him. Yeah, it was slightly playful, but I think that person has a little bit of a chip on their sh shoulder. Maybe it's yeah. a little oh, ego absolutely. thing. And so, yeah, they didn't realize that it was uh, <laughs> It was just... It was me around. trying to just be like, hey, poke, poke in the bear a little. But yeah, and I guess they it's poked fine. a little so, too hard and got blocked for it. <laughs> yeah, so that's the show. Um <laughs> We have not recorded lately because our main thing was recapping local shows we went to. And um, one, our local show hasn't been running much. Two, my wife messed up her back last year. So it's been much harder for her to go to shows. Mm -hmm. I think okay. I have talked her into GCW when GCW yes. comes back. She because will I love told it. her it was basically all the guys we used to watch. Yeah against current guys and it was awesome yeah it was so like, okay, much fun. maybe when they come back because she thought it was like all death match like no there was only one death match like we're good yeah um, stressful but it was fun <laughs> yeah so that was the that's no kind of the bears on gcw um, yeah it was fun yeah we had a good time awesome. we did have a really good time and then we're planning i don't know if kat's gonna come to this one but we're all our group is planning to go to the dbw show in November, finally, I'm trying to talk her into it. Yeah, well, I tell her that. Tell her maybe if if we need it, it's the week before my birthday. So tell her we're going to celebrate my birthday, and maybe <laughs> well, <I laughs> maybe we'll, will maybe that'll convince her to come. Do a it's little nudge. Promotion used to be, yeah, like they're doing what we used to go to. So. Yeah. I yeah, think D I can talk her into it. Yeah, DPW mm -hmm. is basically what our local promotion used to be in like 2017, <laughs> where it was just a bunch of dream matches. And it's just, or dream matches you didn't know you wanted. Like they would just book yep. people against, and you're like, I didn't know I needed this. And oh, was, there were so nice. many social obligations I canceled <laughs> once the matches got announced. Because uh, I'd be like, well, when am I going to see them again? Right. <laughs> That's exactly what we were doing. And like most of my obligations were with other wrestling friends. So I was like, I'm going to this show. And they're like, <laughs> we understand completely. <laughs> um, but yeah, so that's sort of my podcast history. Yeah. And that's how um, we, we uh, connected and things like that. So, and because we have been on the show together, we have gone to not just our local promotions and GCW together. We've also gone to WWE shows together. We've mm -hmm. gone to AEW together which is kind of how we're getting on to the next topic which i guess is a yep. good segue into that um so like we've mentioned before we talked about it in a couple episodes about um just the ada uh seating situation um with most recently was AEW that we had issues with um he can tell you about the nightmare that was jacksonville when we went for oh, double God. or nothing yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was but <laughs> and so, um, you know, there are some issues that are still happening and some of it is not necessarily the promotion's fault. It's, uh, you know, it's obviously the venue, um, but the promotions, I think, could be more proactive, especially like we've mentioned before, how AEW was so involved with Culture City, which is phenomenal. And I'm glad that they are. Um, but if they're going to go the extra mile for that, then I think they should start paying attention to some of the other issues that are happening. Um, yep. Because that way, if you want people to keep coming to your show and spending money, and spending their hard-earned money, and you want them to be actually be able to see <laughs> and things like yeah, that. Yeah, because they pretty much guaranteed with our experience, I'll get there, but like they guaranteed I will never go to a show at Daly's Place again, no matter who's on it. Yeah. You could tell me right now, I could meet Sting and Daniel Bryan one day, and I'd be like, is it Daly's Place, though? Because <laughs> I wouldn't go. Yeah. I absolutely wouldn't go. Um, yeah. All right, so... For those that don't know, when we say ADA, 
Mm -hmm. um, we're talking about the Americans with Disabilities Act. I've grown up with a disability called sacroiliogenesis, birth defect, half my spine never formed. So when I was like two, uh, the doctors got my legs out of the way because I could feel them and not move them. And it was just going to be a huge pain in the ass. So I, as far as I can remember, have not had legs. I think dealing with disability is a very personal thing, very different thing, depending how you're disabled and what you deal with. Um, so all of this is just kind of my experience, but I am also a special ed teacher. So I try really, really hard to advocate and stick up for those that aren't me. Um, and awesome. so basically the ADA got passed in 1990. Before that, there was no law saying public venues had to be accessible. They didn't have to have parking. They didn't have to have seating. You could have shown up in a wheelchair and they could have said, no, nope, sorry, go home. We have no way for you to get in. Yep. Um, and there Sorry. are still places that do. Lots. Uh, my local coffee shop that is very frequented by nerd culture, I technically can't get into. There is no way for me to physically get in there with my wheelchair without assistance. Um, so it's still very alive and well. Mm -hmm. You can choose when to fight it and when not to, but most of the time the fight is very expensive and very difficult, so most don't. Um so to bring that around to wrestling, my very first wrestling show, I was nine years old, Greenville Memorial Auditorium that no longer exists. And my parents, I mean, we weren't super rich, so I think we had bought bleacher seats. We showed up. They saw we were supposed to be in the bleachers. And they said, no, 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 no. We're going to move you to the handicap section. We got you. The handicap section was front row right behind the barricade. Wow. <laughs> it Jesus. was fantastic. Especially so as a like, nine-year-old kid. Yeah, I, I lost it. I mean, I was within six feet of Ric Flair and like guys kept getting thrown in front of me. It, it oh, was awesome. the best. Um, that, there's a story I'll tell off air about that night. <laughs> that really knows, but, yeah. Um, so I got really, really spoiled at my first wrestling show. Well, then, like, I kind of got out of wrestling. I'd been to a couple of shows at our local arena, the Bilo Center, back when WCW was running, and it was Nitro. Back then, it wasn't too bad. They had boxes that are the handicap seats at the bottom of the first bowl, which, not terrible seats, so that's fine. And they were right next to bathrooms and food. So it was super convenient, super easy, not really a huge problem. Until recently, um, and Sam can attest to this because she came to a Raw with me, they've started like triple, quadruple stacking yeah. in those same boxes. Where before it was like you maybe got eight people in there, there was at least 30 disabled yeah. people wow. in there. And a then lot. we all have friends with us or right. You, you a lot of people us. need caregivers. A lot. Yeah. Right. And it's also weird too, because a lot of places you can't buy more than one companion seat. Oh my God. So That's certain ridiculous. arenas, you can only take one person with you. Mm -hmm. um, the only reason we had the two extra spots for Sam and Nikki where I had complained about another show and they were like, we'll give you four tickets to whatever show you want. <laughs> um, and I was like, okay. And that's the only reason we got yep. three companion seats. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, that got to be a mess. Like I couldn't go pee because it was so crowded. Yeah. That one is a safety issue. <laughs> and two, really annoying um so yeah that's that's become not great and i'm gonna call out these arenas straight up do it because i want them to know do it um, that was something that i think that started this whole thing is that yeah if you're gonna tell everyone that wrestling we say it 
all the time for wrestling everyone. is for everybody mm-hmm. you have to make you it need accessible. to mean every everybody yeah and there's a yep. lot it's got to be accessible <laughs> whether you like it or not america we have the system we have and we have people that have support needs that go way beyond what yeah it it's people you know they're like people act like we're a hassle and that's bs because go away especially i i mean there's lots of great wrestling experiences we've had and you could talk about those too but the reality is is that this was a show that we really wanted to do for exactly this reason so please yeah oh <laughs> please um and i already Maybe. messed up and dropped an F-bomb, the F-bomb. <laughs> all right. uh, so but the f your feelings crowd it's not about my feelings it's, it's about having a right it's yeah. about getting to walk into a building that you get to go into no problem to have the same experience you do. Yeah. It's not about Which I'm trying to be not unreasonable rogue. on any level. Right. I'm it's not about trying to like fix the problems with the world. No, I just want to see the show. Like, it's <laughs> right. like and to be able to watch them with our friends because we've had that issue too, which I'm sure Doug will get into. But like, we were lucky that we got to sit with him at that show because there's been other shows where he can have one companion. And so we end up in opposite parts of the arena and we can't, Mm -hmm. we're watching the show together, but not really because we're in separate parts of the arena. And so we're having to, we're having to to text each other in our text group about yeah, things that like, are happening where well, everybody we're else together and we're just looking at our phones talking yeah like, man, and so, exactly because i mean everybody else they can just turn to the person next to them or behind them or whatever and they can have they can talk about like whatever it was but we have to text each other and sometimes a lot of the, us go in groups yeah and, and yeah. this is like something that's true my right. there's usually like i've got about four like there's like four or five of us uh my i have a good friend and they like go to everything together there's like a group of four of them and they do every like they do all of those shows all over together and they right. travel and they split everything so it's well yeah and even like at our local, when our <laughs> local shows run like we all we bought we all are we're basically the front row group we all sit together there and were make sure times we nice. almost had a whole good side catch. Mm-hmm. filled with our group yeah because like nice. it's our core group. yeah go ahead <laughs> sometimes my wife and i would drag a couple friends yeah. or like sometimes other people would have significant others they wanted to bring there yeah. were times we legitimately asked the boss can we just have that whole front row and he's like no it's a like, damn it boss <laughs> yeah because or we would have we have we've met obviously from going to the shows over the years then we would have like some other people that we became friends with and they'd sit they knew we'd sit in the front row so that they would buy seats on the front row as well and like we would it got to the point where like we would find out like we would look at the map and we'd be like okay i'm gonna get like it was always to make sure doug got where he could see and had the best so it was basically doug who was here and then we filled out <laughs> yep. for where doug was at and so we would text each other okay i'm buying you know seat seven and eight and then somebody would be like okay well i'm gonna get seat five and then we would tell our other friends that would sometimes join us okay these are our these are the seats we bought and then they would like buy the seats on the outer part so it, it would literally such be- a hassle <laughs> Um, our entire room. Well, and the thing <laughs> is, and I know he's not popular in a locker room. This sort of leads me to indies. Mm. Indies have a habit of wanting to sit wheelchairs on the corner. Yeah, they do. And I understand it because it's easier to move. It's easier to get out of the way when the action comes your way. Also, again, if the action looks like it's coming your way, it probably is. Get the hell up. Yeah. <laughs> um. And if you are not capable of getting the hell up, you probably don't need to sit dead center. But anyway, that's <laughs> that's another issue. So the Indies like to sit me on the corner. The only reason we started sitting in the middle is a guy named Ed Zahn. He saw me at a show and said, do you want to sit on the corner? And I said, absolutely not. And he said, you know, I can just move a chair in the middle and you can sit in the middle. I was like, really? He's like, yeah. And so I was ruined from then on because I got the <laughs> middle front row experience. Yeah. But shout out to Ed. I know there's, you know, some things, but I've never had a problem with Ed. I Ed is either. great. Um, 
but Ed took care of me at the Indies. So it was just one of those things. Like now I will say um, I've been to pro wrestling turbo revolver and now GCW as far as like Indies that people might know. Um, They've all been fantastic. GCW is the only one I did not have a connection at. Um, Yeah. Because Revolver kind of pulled a string with a friend that used to room with the booker. (laughs) And I was like, hey, man, can you get us good front row seats? And he hooked us up. Um, So it's one of those things that I'm like, okay, Indies, I appreciate the idea behind the corner thing, (laughs) but talk to me. Right. Um, Let, you know, let me make that decision. Uh. But yeah, all the indies I've worked with have been fantastic. Always check on on me. Turbo, especially when they were running when nobody was vaccinated almost, because, you know, South Carolina, um, (laughs) was excellent about giving me my own little pod that was away from other people. Uh, Because I was worried about it. My uh, partner who was going with me was worried about it. Um, that's and then like, tough. I had a teacher I friend and her kid. Too. I mean, that's I had tough. a teacher friend and her kid coming and the, like the kid couldn't get vaccinated. So they right. were like, no, right. absolutely. And they gave us our own little pod. So shout out to Turbo for yep. talking to me that's and looking fantastic. out. Um, but they're, they're great. I do want to shout out GCW. Yeah. Um, they actually did exactly what I'm advising. They asked me. Brett saw me a little in from the corner and said are you cool here or would you rather be on the corner i said i'm cool here he said no problem have fun Um, that's great there's i know that some that brett lauderdale has a little bit of a a reputation for being you know what i the way that the promotion gets treated i can understand it's another chip on your shoulder thing but also he's a promoter he has a job to do too right right it's right. and people there's mixed feelings about gcw so sometimes right. people shit on it and they shouldn't be they should just i don't like it move on right that's yep. enough but to know that that is something that's going on is something that yeah you know, i i could not say enough complimentary that's fantastic yeah because when we um, got because when nikki and i got there he was like man he's like brett's already been over here he was like he's already that's talked fantastic. to me and he was like and made sure i'm cool and you know i'm where i want to be and i was like that's i was like Damn. yeah the and, doors had, like, just told me, and yeah told me exactly who to talk to that's to get awesome. to him if anything ended up not being okay I'm like, That's dude, fantastic. like, you can't do better than that. And there yeah. were, there were three or four of us in chairs at that show. Nice. Um, so that was, that was good. That, that was like that's okay, recognition cool. of like all the different parts of your audience. I think that right. that's right. Very um, important. now I will say, GCW gonna give a little heads up. Light tubes not great <laughs> near the wheelchairs. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, they're not great near the anything. I was yeah, up I was in the balcony enough. and I like wore glasses. I don't blame <laughs> on you. purpose because I I just was like I didn't want to risk it, and I I was further away even, and I was glad because I did get a couple of flex. Yeah, absolutely. I mean. And I was um, not close. We were not close to the ring because we yeah, were, I, went and met Minoru Suzuki. So we got like as far back. The only reason I was even where I was was because we found a couple of people take pity on my tiny little ass. And <laughs> I'm, I, as I've told Sam many times, um, I am about 11 inches tall. So hey, I me too. have difficulty. <laughs> Um, just about doing any, um, I had a good friend say that the only reason that I live in a house is because I'm actually, uh, a borrower and I live in a shoe box. So, um, <laughs> yeah, that's one thing that I'm sitting front row with Doug. Short and, people. But it's, Nikki and I are short. And so we like the further back we get, the harder it is to see, or like yep. the barricades come like right here. 
yeah. So, <laughs> so yeah, I had right. great we're blood and guts. Spoiled to front, we're spoiled to front row too because of our because of our height. It's uh, yeah. I had, <laughs> I had, I had great blood and guts seats, but um, this is where like the the ring was, and, <laughs> yeah. and my partner, but my uh, husband, he is six two. So he gets to take all the pictures in those cases. Yeah, my wife is like 5'10", and my partner <laughs> is similar. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, they're very tall, so it's like, oops. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so light tubes and wheels, not great. But I was smart enough when I saw the box of light tubes. I was like, ooh, got to go. And just yeah, yeah we were trying Nikki and I were trying to see where you went because we could see I left we I went saw, all the way to yeah and because Matthew he was sitting near our friend Matthew who I've mentioned on the show before and he and Matthew it was like I had to close my eyes a few times and but I looked and I was like where did Doug go and then I realized it was because he did the smart thing and got out of the way yeah, <laughs> yeah those well. things because we were three rows back and I still ended up with a little piece that like hit me in the leg like it didn't cut me or anything and I was like so I can only imagine being front row and having yeah. the bigger shards and it's funny though because like all of the carnage took place exactly where I had left like that's <laughs> no, where most of, of the carnage was of I was course. like I made the right decision yeah <laughs> um, but that's fine uh um, so yeah to get get off the GCW tangent <laughs> great Great service, just light tubes and wheels. Not a great combo. No. Um, you can buy non-pop wheels, but they're way heavier, so I'm not going to do that. Yeah. That's um, understandable. Yeah. So that leads me to uh, I went to college in Illinois, and University of Illinois is historically known as one of the top two schools for people in wheelchairs. Even if you have a disability that requires a personal assistant to help you get ready in the morning, they provide that in a dorm from the school. Wow. Like they have varsity wheelchair basketball, varsity wheelchair track. It is if you want to make the Paralympics in either of those sports, you go to Illinois. It's huh. not even a question. Interesting. Very, very big wheelchair population. Even their auditorium at the time had the people stand up problem. They And what I'm talking about is certain stadiums are not well designed and arenas and different venues. And the handicapped seats are at the top of the bowl, but the last row of seats are too close. And when people stand up, you can't see a damn thing. The only shows... I paid for, I got to see in Illinois were a touring production of Rent and Weird Al Yankovic because people didn't stand up or if they did, they were children. Um, right. Weird Al was like the best 20 bucks I ever spent. By the way. <laughs> um, I have a good friend going for his birthday in October. Um, it's think... his first time seeing him and I know he's Weird doing might have classic. Been in my town, like last week and I didn't go because I'm busy. <laughs> if, what? Yeah, busy. Right? Too busy uh, for Weird Al. Yeah. Oh, and I'm trying to save and money. And here I was respecting you this time. No, right? I'm, I'm giving you shit. I'm sorry, yeah, yeah, I know. Uh, <laughs> no, I'm trying to save for a new car right now. Oh, well, uh, that is kind yeah. of important. Yeah. So. Um, okay, so then get past college, get off my wrestling hiatus. Right after we started the podcast... The friends and I were like, we should go to Mania. And when Dallas, for the first time, was going to be in that giant ATT Jerry's World oh, yeah. stadium, yep, Dallas. we were like, I bet tickets are going to be cheap as hell because they're going to try to sell that thing out. They actually weren't terrible. They they were okay, better than I expected. Good. Um. I don't think the second time they were as cheap as when we went the first time. Um, so we get there and I will admit we played the system a little bit because a lot of arenas have separate handicap lines and Jerry's had one of them. <laughs> we had been drinking. We had made friends with some people that had been drinking with us. So we got them in with me. So we got like seven people in 
the handicap door and i was the only like <laughs> visually handicapped person but whatever <laughs> that's their problem for yeah. crappy systems yeah <laughs> um this is the single worst experience i've ever had because wow. i didn't buy handicap seats because of course one companion had three people going with me fuck that i'm gonna just buy a regular seat i have done this for years at various shows and every stadium i've ever dealt with has a closet or something they can put my wheelchair in and it's just like yeah i'll just walk on my arms and go to the seat it's fine so jerry's world is the most confusing set of elevators and levels I've ever seen in a stadium. Not all the elevators go to all the levels and not all the elevator, like there was no direct way to get to our section with a wheelchair. So we had to be led by security, but they only let one person come with me. Um, so we had to split our group then Security didn't know their way around the damn stadium. We got lost as hell. We're lucky we were in our seats before the pre-show started. Jeez. And I wish I could say that was the worst part. It's not. Um, I'm hoping this has changed since then. So we get to our section. The lady was very, very nice to me. Could not have been sweeter. She's like, oh, it's real impressive. You can walk down there to that seat. I'm like, yeah, it is. Like, thanks. <laughs> uh, do something with my chair. When I start walking down the stairs, she taps my friend who was with me. We were on the seventh level. And she's like, so you have to take his wheelchair down to guest services on the fourth floor. And he... Um, if he needs it, you're going to have to send somebody to get it from guest services. And he does it because he was super anti-confrontational. <laughs> if I had heard that shit, I would have been livid. Yeah. Because I learned very early on in my wheelchair life and traveling. You never separate from your wheelchair. Right. At right. the worst, it's in the trunk. Yeah. You never go in separate vehicles. You never go on separate planes because your chair might not make it. Yeah, exactly. So you definitely, when you're in a stadium of 100,000 people, don't want your wheelchair three floors down. Right. Also, <laughs> it's, it's before they started doing the two nights. So this shit was seven hours long. Yeah. Gonna have to go to the bathroom. <laughs> yeah, I was dying because I didn't want to send my friends to get my chair because I didn't want them to miss anything they wanted to see. I finally got desperate enough. I was like, can someone please tell them to go get my chair because I have to piss like crazy. <laughs> and... They did. Luckily, it was the Cesaro Battle Royale that, uh, not Cesaro, Andre Battle Royale that uh, I think Shaq was in and Corbin won. Yeah. So I didn't miss anything. <laughs> no, that's the tough, that's but the match to take a pee, pee break in. That shouldn't have been how it worked. No, no. And I emailed, I tweeted, I put in every ounce of like, due diligence I could to bring this policy to someone's attention that it was crap and dangerous and no person in a wheelchair should be comfortable with that policy. Mm -hmm. um, never heard a word. Never heard a thing. Completely unacceptable. <laughs> yeah. I hope it has changed. I hope the local population has fought that policy. I understand most people in wheelchairs can't get out of them, but there's a lot that can. Right. Especially well, if you're going to be People don't going understand. There's such a massive division of how, and then you get judged because it's like, well, right. Well, what do you need it for? And what do you, it's, it's, I, 
I have a friend. None of your business. Used, yeah. Who used to live in Illinois, who now lives in Washington. She oh. has cerebral palsy and she can walk short distances. Like going into a Panera, grabbing her food and walking to the table is fine. Walking around the St. Louis Zoo all day is not. Right. Um, and pe people can't comprehend that. Yeah. Um, it's just one of those things that it is yet again, this isn't about people's feelings. This right. is about accessibility mm -hmm. and safety. Yeah. And it was not provided by AT&T Stadium. Um, which sucked and really, really like ensured even if it was a dream WrestleMania, I won't go again. That sucks um, too because it was WrestleMania, man. Like yeah. everyone should get to go. Like every wrestling fan should get to go to a WrestleMania, even if you're not yeah. a fan. Like one I mean, time or a huge fan or a casual fan, or it's mm -hmm. it's one of those things that I you know it's on the list of. Yeah. Must do things. Yeah, then... even for me, like I haven't been before, and it's even at the point where I obviously don't really keep up with WWE anymore. Like if they were coming to Charlotte or but somewhere close by, chance, by yeah, then I would absolutely go. But yeah, and like you said, so then anybody should have that. Right. You know, have it that completely ability to do destroys so. one of the most important experiencing experience yep. ex experiences. Let me talk. <laughs> uh, that that a wrestling fan can have. If, yeah. Rarely are you gonna. I mean, if you're lucky and it's fairly, I mean, that's you know, maybe fairly close, but more often yeah. than not, you're traveling somewhere. Yep. So yeah. you're coming from away. The only way I will ever go to a Mania week again is if it comes back to Atlanta, which recent patterns show it's not going to. Um, <laughs> but if I went, I wouldn't go to anything WWE related, I'll go to some indie shows. Yeah. yeah. Um, the stuff that pops not, up around it. I'm not touching Mania. Yeah. Um, although, fun Mania yeah. tip, if you don't know it, uh, WWE Access has two lines. <laughs> they have a regular line where you wait four hours to meet one person. And they have a ADA wheelchair line. Moves a lot faster. <laughs> so if you have a person in your group... <laughs> Who happens to be in a wheelchair? Utilize the ADA line because I met <laughs> Sami Zayn, Cesaro, the Bella Twins, Tyler Breeze, and Shawn Michaels in one access session. Nice. Um, and Shawn Michaels was the only one that sucked. Uh, surprise, surprise. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> based on some of the things we know now, as not, advertised, not. right? <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> so the mania story. Is crazy because that's the worst experience I've ever had. Turn around to the Raw after Mania. Best handicap service I have ever had in any venue. American Airlines Center does it 100% correct. Because again, it was a Raw after Mania. I couldn't just buy handicap seats to that. Right. So we went on StubHub and paid way too much for seats that were way high up because wasn't <laughs> i gotta wait i gotta stop you here because i think this keeps popping up as like you keep saying you can't buy handicapped access tickets to that i, ke yeah. I keep hearing that at, for all these events like what they don't have them they're not available you don't it's not ticket master is notoriously bad mm -hmm. about not showing every handicap seat available so even if there were seats, if I go to Ticketmaster and click the button, it'll say no handicap seats available. What I have come to find out is each arena holds back handicap seats from Ticketmaster. They don't tell you that. You only find out if you're a pain in the ass like me and go <laughs> online and tweet and DM and get promoters locally to help you and all these other people to right. reach out so they don't it's, make it easy for you to like because 
Theoretically, it's, the way around that would be that you could have some access as someone who's worked in like theater before. And I understand about how a little bit of it is that you, if you could have access to calling directly to the box office at the venue, they could help you purchase your tickets. If right. they know what the hell that, they're doing. <laughs> is that something that no, be, or do they would, I guess, they would probably tell you to call to there to go go on Ticketmaster. So I imagine depends. that if you were able to even reach a box office, which you probably can't. It I depends mean, depends who answers the phone. Mm -hmm. That's the problem. Yeah. Okay. I yeah. have had so many times no where they're like, "Nope, if it's sold out on Ticketmaster, there's not any." But okay. then we went and did our complaining, and magically, I had. Oh, two tickets. look at that. Yeah weird yeah and so, the bojangles situation at the bojangles arena like yeah. they were we were doing it he was doing it during the pandemic and so or like well af post pandemic but they were still like they wouldn't let you into the box office and they gave doug yeah. a really hard time about by about even they're like we'll call you back and it, he was waiting like several hours yeah and, uh, weren't we okay. together was that Jacksonville, no. we were buying for Fight for the Fallen. No, we, yeah, we did do that. But then when we went to Bojangles, I remember you had a hard time calling to uh, because AW, no, that Fight for the Fallen, the one here, the one that had Nick yeah. Gage. Yes, that one. I yeah. think I was buying the tickets for it while uh -huh. we were driving back from Jacksonville. I, you, I can't remember. And I ended up, and then he ended up leaving them at Will Call, and I went because I live like. 15 minutes from or 15 or 20 minutes yeah. from the venue, I went and picked up his tickets for him and ha had them so that when we all got there for the show, I could just give him his tickets because that yeah, was the it way was, it was it. nuts. Yeah, it was insane because the, he would call and like they didn't, the person answering didn't know anything about ADA seating and like wheelchair seating. And they were like, I don't know. And they're like, it should be on the website. And it, yeah, it was a whole mess. Yeah. For him I get. love the uh, it should be on the website. I want to get back to your raw experience, but it was yeah, something yeah, yeah. that no, but that, I it's my brain kept has been flagging. I question. must have heard you say at least a half dozen times now. <laughs> yeah, when you're talking about just just the simple act of purchasing tickets, right? Yeah, and even especially that if you're trying to well, and I, you had issues with. Did you have issues with pre-sale tickets too? Because I know like one oh, we, we were we tried to buy tickets with pre-sale and I think he was trying to do pre-sale tickets at one point and yep. they didn't and know it was for AEW. So what happens is I'll call them and they won't know. And then by the time they actually get back to me, the seats I wanted are gone. Are gone. Mm -hmm. Um and I'm not even being crazy about it. Like I just want. Well, you're Where a wrestling you fan yeah, who happens to going. have support needs. That's the bottom line. It's not as yeah. if, like, this is not right. a weird bit. Now, the good news is silly. the difficulty has led me. So the first AW show at Bojangles, I had worked it out. We got, like, diagonal from the ring. And they mm -hmm. were great seats. But then what's happened is the past two or three because we had fight for the fallen and battle the belts. Right. Yeah. And I think the very first time they came here, I didn't go, Nikki and I were at Elton John. So we didn't go yeah, to that yeah, concert. Yeah. And I think, but I think you went to that one though, didn't you? The very first I think time that's came the to one Charlotte? you had to go get my tickets for. And you maybe that's what, okay. Yeah. Yourself. Maybe that was that one. Okay. Um, so the diagonal was fine and great seats. But then the next two times I had this whole rigmarole and couldn't get those seats again. And they're like, well, we have seats, but they're obstructed view. And I'm like, really? Like, that's all the handicapped seats you have? And they're like, yep. I'm like, screw it. I just want to be in the building. Right? Yeah. So turns out, though, those obstructed view seats are actually closer to the ring than the diagonal seats. So I love them. They're fantastic. <laughs> um, another issue I don't think I've mentioned, a lot of times the handicap seats are not front row, but cost the same as front row. Mm -hmm. That's they one thing the I learned. I had, expensive tickets. Yeah, I had That's... no idea until he was telling us this, that the, the, uh, the, wheel the wheelchair accessible seats were way more expensive. Or like you said, at the same price as front row. And yeah. you're up 
and like the 100 section 100 that's madness section. Yeah. yeah it's that's it's there's no excuse mess. for that i'm it sorry that's... um so yeah if if you can afford the tickets and get someone who actually knows what to do maybe you can get into a building and hope it goes well this is the daily experience of people and like y'all know but mm. a lot of people don't right and it i don't have a problem doing that fight but this is exactly why a lot of people don't have the energy to go to things yeah. or don't have the desire to go to things when they're disabled because it takes so much. Everything's a fight. Yeah. Yeah. It's you, bad enough that in our daily lives we have to fight with, uh, you know, insurance companies and mm -hmm. uh, hospitals and all the other things. I mean, anybody that has chronic illness or disability needs, no matter what, everything is a fight anyway. And then you're yep. going to do something recreational and you end up having to wage another war and like you i you keep saying it and i think it's incredibly important that people understand that advocating for yourself is the best thing you can do but it's also the hardest thing you can do yeah mm -hmm. because you spend every single day you also happen to be sick and it's not fair to you and it's not fair to your caregiver who may have a full-time job on top right. of being a caregiver it, that's my case um or if you have multiple right disabilities in the family yep. like i know mm -hmm. a lot of people in wheelchairs who are married mm -hmm. i know my yep. wife has a back injury things have gotten way more oh, yeah god forbid someone that like is your caregiver has their own medical emergency right I, right you, you know like um so yeah it's so stratified it's and wonderful such a mess that, and yeah, i totally get the people that's really unfortunate yeah i totally get the people who can't fight that fight Right. And um, then we had the, and uh, Doug will probably get into this, like we, and, and that's how another reason I saw some of the stuff firsthand is like when I last, was last year that we went to uh, Double or Nothing, it was the first pay-per-view back uh, that AEW had done. And I, on a whim, <laughs> decided to apply for media tickets and yep. got them and then was like, okay, so I have the media ticket, which covers me. But my, I was like, I have to, I was like, I can't fly, so I have to drive. So Nikki, of course, wanted to come, but then Nikki didn't want to sit by herself. And so we had asked some friends, Doug ended up being able to work it out so that he could go. But then it was this whole other thing of getting Doug tickets. And then th this whole trip <laughs> was yeah. like the, the hotel was a mess. Oh, uh, God, don't, that, don't get me started on that hotel. That, this entire, like the double or nothing, Everywhere. thank God the show was great because everything before and after was terrible. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> it's so bad. So, yeah, and I can I can talk about Daly's place. Yeah. So Daly's place had the yes, exact same please. problem Illinois had. The handicap seats are great. They're fantastic. They're close. You can see details, you can see facial reactions. Fantastic. But then if anyone stands up, you can't see a damn thing. And if you go sit in the aisle so you can see, you get yelled at because it's a fire it's hazard. It's a fire hazard. Um, now, here's my issue with the Daily's Place thing. I get it. It happens. Happens to the best of venues. They had had complaints before because we were sitting with a guy who said this happened to me last time and they haven't changed a thing. The solution was easy. Put the feed on the screen. Yeah, that totally fine. I did not see a single entrance. I did not see a single finish. And I missed most exciting moments because people stood up. Mm -hmm. The only thing I saw in its entirety was the part I had no interest in, which was inner circle versus the pinnacle stadium stampede. Yeah, because <laughs> it was all video. Yeah. I'm like, why couldn't y'all broadcast? Because they would show clips, like yeah. exciting parts might go up on the screen, but they also might not. Well, and then or like also, if they went to the outside, they put it up on the screen. Yeah. So if also, you can put it on the screen, then mm -hmm. do it yeah. the whole freaking right. time. And like you said, it's a simple solution and it's an issue they've had before. But even before we got to that issue, we got to 
like I, I got in and they went in separately because I went in through the media entrance, but then we, we met up and we went in and they found, they went to their seats and found out their seats weren't there because our they, seats didn't exist. Yeah. Their seats did not exist oh, excellent. because it was double or nothing. You know, it's the, it's the casino theme. They had two slot machines where Nikki and Doug were supposed to be sitting. Mm -hmm. So then we had to go deal with guest <laughs> services Guest yeah, services is like, would you like to sit in this spot that is going to have the sun on your back until it goes down? And Nikki and I were like, no, thank you. And then they found us another spot, but we had to go all the way across the venue to get to that other spot. They ended up being near me, though. <laughs> I mean, I was yeah. up, but I could see them like the whole time that I was watching. Like, Also, I could I'm I not mad them. about the move to that spot because it put us next to the Moxley kick door. Yep. And um, him and Nikki still talk about that, which I don't blame them. <laughs> and we got to meet Wardlow in person because he was like, yes, hanging out over there, and he was super nice. Um, also stunningly handsome in real life, like <laughs> he looks good on TV, stunning in real life. <laughs> so, Nikki um, and Doug call I him, believe it. they call him, they call him their best friend, they're, they're yeah. best, that's what they refer to him. Well, as. they are, uh, I mean, yeah, they, come on, <laughs> but like that makes so, you best friends. I spent much of Double or Nothing pushed up on my wheelchair standing because I have the arm strength to do that. It helped a little bit. I still couldn't see much, but it was better than nothing. But sitting right next to me, guy approximately my age with Huntington's. Right. He couldn't do that. He can't do that. Couple he guys on the other that. side in the next little handicap spot. They couldn't stand. And they were just shit out of luck. Yep. Um, and Doug has tried, like, after that, like, we tried reaching. He's tried, like, tweeting at the venue. He tweeted at EW. He, yep. multiple times, never got a response. Zero response. Zero anything. And it's what Sam has said. I don't remember if it was recorded or before the show. If you are going to advertise yourself as the alternative to the evil empire you're advertising yourself as the accessible one we have autism bags we have all sorts of resources for you and you can't even respond to that that's a problem yeah um, we have talked about that agree yeah. you know, and it's, i mean it's absurd like, it is. Sure. Well, and especially when they're, I mean, this shouldn't be the reason why, but that's literally why the ADA Act exists. Like, mm -hmm. that's literally what it's for. And you can't even. And you still have to battle doing, people. Right. And they're doing the, some places are doing the bare minimum, which Daly's Place was doing the bare minimum. They have options, but you can't, it's a pain in the ass to get to. You can't see. So if that's your whole, like if you're, and we, that's another thing I think that even started this whole thing was AEW prides itself on its fan experience. AEW shows that I've been to have been a blast. I've had so much fun. Tony's Tony has always been there. He's super energetic. He wants mm -hmm. everybody to have a good time, but then they're not taking in these little details that they should be so that every, if wrestling is for everyone and you want it to be accessible for everyone, then you have to actually do the work as Cody Rhodes likes to say, <laughs> you have to do the work and make it that way. And um, you can't ignore people tweeting at you and i think you even and added what Cody was Rose. real shitty <laughs> the young man with huntington's they used in pr they had him in the fan fest video because he went to the fan fest and met a bunch of the guys so he was all over that video but then Not the next nice day he couldn't see the show yeah exactly so that yeah that's in the, they didn't you even sign, i mean as we all know is you now sign they have your, uh, culture city there and Amanda have since worked with that family and kind of made up for it, um, which, is, which great. is, I'm so happy for them because they've been nothing but pleasant because they're actually from North Carolina. So whenever AEW is here, it was crazy. Like we sat next to them in Jacksonville and then I went to AEW in Charlotte and they were right there next to us. I was like, can I sit next to you in Florida? <laughs> and the mom yeah, and like, it turns yeah. out that they actually apparently don't live very far from me and Nikki. Like they live in the next yeah. little town um, over. That's fun. <laughs> but yeah. that you don't get to use us in your PR if you're mm -hmm. not going to accommodate. Right. That That is my opinion. Mm -hmm. um, and maybe some people don't care. 
but I do. Right. When and then not, um, are y'all familiar with the term inspiration porn? Yes. Um, we're not your inspiration porn if you're not going to listen to us after the fact. Yeah. I'll be on some inspiration porn. I don't care. <laughs> Go for it. Tell the story <laughs> you want to tell, but I better get something for it. You know? Right. May, and make the changes. Don't, I don't. And then that's clearly they're advertising themselves as somebody for people who are in wheelchairs and you can go and have a good time and you can see, mm -hmm. but then that's not the case for everybody. That's for the people who are not in the PR video. They are not having that experience and that's unacceptable. Right. right. And so they've got to, I think that's something. And again, this isn't just an AEW thing, but for if somebody who prides themselves on the fan experience, then yep. that's something that they need to take care of. But I mean, you know, this is happening at, and there is happening with the bigger companies. And I understand obviously with Indies, they're smaller. They have access to, and because even like when he's gone to the new Japan shows, like he went to new Japan strong um, a couple of weeks ago, but luckily somebody that we, the, somebody that we know through PWX was involved. And so they were able to make sure that Doug, but you were still on the end. <laughs> yeah. Know? But that was my own fault. Like I, right. I will accept the responsibility for that. <laughs> Right. Um, honestly, I was being cheap. But anyway, <laughs> uh, the, the tickets were not. Those tickets they were, were not cheap. No, they um, were. We've had that conversation. New Japan strong. But again, yeah. If I hadn't had that person we know hooking me up, I don't know what I would have done. Yeah. Like I don't. Even, I didn't even see the spot on New Japan site to buy handicap seating. Mm -mm. Um. So, uh, yeah, and then I think with, for me, how did but. when we went to Ring of Honor, did you you ended up buying just regular seats, right? Because it was at I mean, again, at Cabrera, so I was sitting was with <laughs> a lot, our former friend, mm -hmm. and I think it was a regular seat, right? It wasn't, yeah, it was just a regular seat, and I think we either moved the chair or I sat in the regular seat, yeah, because I but it was like second row, and the standing up problem was a problem, yeah. Even the dudes in, the in front row. of us were super hammered uh, yeah. and did not give a Useful. damn if they were sitting. Because right. at least even at Daly's place, there were certain people who realized and apologized to me. They're like, I'm sorry. I'm like, I get it. I understand. I appreciate you for caring. You have a good time. But I'm sitting here pissed off. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, right. So. All right. So rewind because I don't want to be on the show and be one of those... You didn't finish this story. Um, <laughs> so the raw experience. At yeah, that, oh, Airlines, yes. Yeah. Sorry I would that. like to wrap. Yeah. <laughs> I had uh, bought regular seats towards the top because that's what we found on Stuff Hub. Again, trying to sit with my friend. Um, and we went up there. They had no problem storing my wheelchair. I'd like to point out. They were like, yeah, we got a lock closet right here. Here you go. And so we went up there and within five minutes, super tall dude sat in front of me. Of course. <laughs> oh my God, damn it. <laughs> and so my friend goes to the arena people. And I mean, just the regular usher in the area is like, hey, this happened. Do y'all have like a booster seat or anything y'all can do? And they're like, hang on. Within... 15 minutes we were moved to a handicap section with more space and a, were way better seats than what we had bought nice and it was not even uh like you, we weren't told you should have bought these seats we weren't told anything it was simply we want you to have a good experience you couldn't see we're gonna put you somewhere you can and it was great it was a good time um, that's awesome yeah, that was the raw. Maurice came back. Cesaro came back. Uh, a beach ball was more over than Baron Corbin and Dolph Ziggler. <laughs> oh, I think um, I remember that show. That, with that bear, yeah, yeah I, wa I watched the beach ball people get kicked out. They were like two <laughs> sections over. See, but, yeah, you, got, so, you, got even, you got to experience that too. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, but American Airlines Center, absolutely the best service I've ever had. Um, I've only got two more venues that I've been to that aren't indies. So NXT back when Hunter was running it and they would do small local house shows, right? They weren't always in the big cities. My hometown has a history. My receptionist where I used to work 
used to go every Friday night to watch Ric Flair do the wrestling. That's what you did I in the 70s in this town. Those are my favorite people. Um, she was sweet as could be. She was crazy, but she was sweet as could be. Yeah. Um, so my town has history. There is a old, I can't remember if it's a Crockett or an NWA disassembled ring in the back halls of this venue. And like, we know people, Sam, that have uh-huh. pretended they worked there to go see that ring. <laughs> um, I believe it. I'm yeah. So wrapping up a history. book about the Detroit territory here. And yeah. uh, wow. Yeah. yeah. So lots of history. Triple H was not stupid. He knew he'd sell it out every single time. So he ran my little town. That venue is 10 minutes from my house. Fantastic. Um, so I'm at work when tickets go on sale. And this is the first time they came. And I'm like, okay. I'm, and I, all my kids were wrestling fans. My assistant understood. So we specifically took a break right when the tickets were going to go on sale because I needed to get tickets. <laughs> um, and like, yeah, maybe I shouldn't admit that publicly, but whatever. It was like six years ago. I didn't um, hear a thing. Yeah. So, but Kat, my wife, was also at home hitting up Ticketmaster. She got us exactly front row center for right across from the ramp for a show that I'm pretty sure had Shinsuke, FTR, Asuka. It was a lot of the really, really legendary people before they got called up. It was like their last NXT run. And I flipped out. Like it was, it was so good. It was one of the greatest experiences. I was like, oh my God, we are going to be front row center for these talents. That's amazing. Get to the venue. The barricade is so tall, I can't see. My wheelchair can't do it because it's like the attached seats and they wouldn't take them apart to let me slide my wheelchair in there. We asked, and the venue staff tried. They really did. We asked if they had booster seats or anything. They didn't. They went to like their back office and got their thickest catalogs for me to try to sit on so I could see. But front row center absolutely ruined just because I was short. Um, And like, come on, it would have taken us less than five minutes to unzip tie those chairs, yeah. take out the one and let me sit in my wheelchair. But they yeah. wouldn't do it. So Ridiculous. I completely had a different experience than I expected. And then from that point on, I don't buy the front row seats anymore. Um, I buy the bleacher seats and I walk up to the top of the bleachers because at least if I'm up there, nobody can be in front of me enough to where I can't see. Yeah. So, yeah, that sucked. Um, that was almost as bad as the Daily's Place experience. If I had driven I six hours for it, it would have been. <laughs> yeah, that's, <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah, so that venue, eh. but they're smaller and they're more local. So, like, I'm not surprised, but it still sucked. And yeah. there wasn't, because it was NXT, I mean, we even knew people that worked there and I couldn't get it fixed. Um, our referee friend, Sam. Oh, uh, I mean, he knew I was there. He, yeah, he couldn't do anything. Um, so yeah, it just it's venue by venue. It's a constant battle. The ADA is supposed to make everything a level playing field, right? And it's just not. It it well, hasn't. It has been. to be enforced. It has um, to be overseen. It has to, I mean, nothing. Well, and the only a way law it gets, is just there. It's just something yeah. in a vacuum unless somebody is. Every time it. you attempt to enforce it, people pitch a shit fit. I yeah. Know. Oh, exactly. Uh, well, why do you need that? 
because I do. Now shut your mouth. Like, <laughs> right. It's really? No, um, it's true though. <laughs> it, sh it shouldn't be. You shouldn't like have to. It's, it's like, okay, every time I want to do this recreational thing. Oh, but don't worry. There'll be a big fiasco beforehand that yeah. I have to go through first. I mean, yeah. who want like that's I mean it's hard I to actively... like get excited and stay excited about something if you're like, let's see what's up this time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I actively don't go to concerts anymore. Oh, I, I don't what blame you. Because it's too much it. of a hassle. Like, yeah. why am I gonna really go bad. and like get beer spilled on me and barely be able to see? And why? Why am I going to do that? I'm just sit at home and listen to the album on Spotify. Like, <laughs> oh, if right. I'm terrible for artists, I'm sorry, but I'm on a teacher salary, so I can't buy it. <laughs> you do what you gotta I don't do. think you owe anyone an apology there because that's something that if a company wants to make money, they need to be aware mm -hmm. of that people that exist in the world and yep. or, or in this country, and there are plenty of people in your situation that would go do or see or be part of something and don't because you just said it it's too much of a hassle that mm -hmm. just it's like yo i exist i'm a human right. like yep. treat me like one I, yeah you'd be exactly. surprised how many people like i know you guys wouldn't but like people listening you'd be surprised how many people can see me and talk to me and hear me and like still think of me as less than just oh, yeah. because there are no legs it right. it's baffling it makes no sense and i can tell them i've been to australia i've been to canada i've been to brazil i tried out for the olympics like Fantastic. i am a success story right and you still suck like <laughs> yeah right yeah uh, um but yeah, so I think in part of that, I mean, I've always said this is um, I think people are afraid. Yeah, I think that it's yep. something they don't want to look at because the possibility of their personal, uh, you know, the potential that they could end up in a situation where they might have to deal with whatever their mind projects at that moment I've, is something that people are absolutely terrified of. And I've seen so many kids tricky get slapped or spanked or popped for asking about me. Wow. And as a teacher, that really bothers me. Yeah. I can imagine. Um, we have I mean, not... Paul Fontaine on the network has a daughter who, you know, needs full-time wheelchair support yeah. and, we, I think, I think he'll appreciate, you know, some things that you talk about and he's had some good experiences and bad, but it's, he's got a little girl. That little girl should be able to have conversations and stuff with that in, in languages that she can speak. That, sure. And that's, well, it's and unfair. It's I'll tell you a story too, human. because it's, it's part of the reason I went into the field I went into. That's which I'm glad you're in. That's you awesome. never know how much a disabled person is in there, even if they can't speak, even if mm -hmm. they can't move on their own, they might still be in there because I was in Brazil and a family asked me to come meet their daughter and the daughter was severely disabled, nonverbal, severe CP. She was all like scrunched up and uh, CP is cerebral palsy. I don't want to. Mm -hmm. use disabled lingo that people don't know. Right. Um, and what was crazy is I talked to the parents and she had wanted to meet me. I spoke directly to her. Nice. That's awesome. Watching her light up that I was speaking to her. That answered every question I ever had. Yep. Like, this is what you need to do. She got so excited when we were taking a picture together, she spasmed and punched me in the face. Oh, no. <laughs> but she was in there. Right. And that's right. Only... And you saw her. Right. And that's one story. I have yeah. hundreds. Hundreds. More. I'm yeah. sure. Um, I mean, you do it as a daily thing. It's I... just, it's baffling. 
I've had, I mean, I've worked with kids with special needs just because I had a cousin who, I mean, he's unfortunately not with us anymore, but was born without his corpus callosum, which is the stem that connects the two brain hemispheres. And, um, but you could, he communicated incredibly well through music. Um, You know, his movement skills improved and I, but I'm also, this is like, here's a little like, sort of it's relevant in terms of, you know, having worked front of house at venues uh, pretty regularly. Yeah. I was a pretty substantial portion of my career. I was always the one that got uh, relegated to talking to, can you go talk to the, we don't, can you go talk to the person with Down syndrome or the person in the wheelchair? Well, it was always me that was being the person that was being, right. you're just, you're just better at talking to those people. It's like, well, and what, what, what those people, you mean, those, you mean the human being standing on the other side right. of the counter from you? It's not, they're not like some. Uh, well, and here's what's fun. Exactly what you just pointed out. They grouped wheelchair and downs as those people. Just when everybody two, goes in one big completely vat. different things. Totally two different. Two completely right. different situations. Totally. Even wheelchair to wheelchair. Yeah, because oh no the whole situation is. The if same. only I'm not even like I don't require wheelchair support, and I just get mad at people for just yeah. like lumping everybody into. Yeah. Well, um, well, how come you can stand up sometimes? How is that your business? Yeah. Are, <laughs> right. are you my doctor? No. I'm okay. unfortunately well, one of those people. That's where I do. A, I don't do a lot of. I wouldn't say that it sounds like I, I'm as vocal or um, give give some shits yeah but when i see stuff like that go on i have absolutely zero patience for it and i yep. don't yeah it gets handled. well i don't do well in that right. situation um, because it's so it's bullshit yeah. Yeah. And i'm really it's, glad that we had this conversation and i yeah. have a couple of questions for you to kind of you know wrap the the conversation up is that and i wrote them down because i felt like they would be <laughs> let me just get to okay them. while you find those one more venue okay, one more venue Go colonial for life arena is in columbia south carolina i love that you've been to enough to have the this is great uh, this is yeah. fantastic I, and this is something sam and i talked about over text when we were planning this it's not just one place mm-hmm. it's literally nationwide it's mm-hmm. literally venue yeah. by venue. Sometimes uh-huh. it's company by company when you see a pattern. Um, yeah. So this is the basketball stadium for University of South Carolina. And there. honestly, pretty great service. Um, not like American Airlines level, but pretty good. But that's also because I bought a meet and greet for Thunder Rosa. So I don't know if it's like this at every show. But the meet and greet was like a get in early pass. So we got in before everybody else. Yeah. We met Thunder Rosa. It took like two seconds. We got to get our food. We got to go to merch. And then we got to go to our seats before anyone else was in the door. I will be buying a meet and greet for every <laughs> AEW show for the rest of my life, even if I don't want to meet anybody. Because not possible. There's too that- many. People. That's worth 70 bucks to me. Yeah. 100%. And I got a cool picture (laughs) with Thunder Rosa. Like, yeah. Sign me up. Let's go. (laughs) Um, So my buddy in a wheelchair was actually with me at that show. And it was great. Like, we got where we needed to go. We got our food. Part of the great service was um, a former local guy is now working in AEW merch. And he knows. Oh, yeah. (laughs) Um, so yeah, love him. Shout out to, uh, to Mr. What's, what's his actual last name? For, for Bach. Oh yeah. That one. Um, <laughs> the, the world. Yeah. <laughs> Great dude. Very yes. nice guy. He's also done some sign language in That's ring fun. for my wife who is hard of hearing. Um, he tends to bring a tent to the ring. <laughs> he <And> does. <laughs> so my wife taught him the, ASL signed for tent and he used it in his next match. That's awesome. Yeah. That's great. Uh, yeah. We have our fair has um, sign or they have 
people yep. who sign the uh, almost all of the main stages. Awesome. All yeah, during fantastic. the fair, which is fantastic. Um, yeah, they have a special day where they highlight it. But Good. it's and it's amazing actually. I it's we've you know spoken to several of them after the fact because we just think it's fantastic and also we love to uh, sort of kind of figure out how you're coming up with because fair isn't exactly the most uh you want to talk about colorful and uh yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> dropping inappropriate it's like having to come up with signs for some of these uh, <laughs> yep. things that go on at fair My and i just i what a great level of like get, you're on another level in my mind. You're not just like you've got this other language, and then you're doing this other other language. <laughs> my and personal they're amazing. favorite. They're amazing. Their facial expressions. It's amazing. What an amazing. Yeah, group. and facial expressions are a big part of ASL. Like it changes the meaning. Mm -hmm. Um. They but what I love, my favorite thing lately with interpreters, like everybody loves the rapper <laughs> ones going crazy. <laughs> Political interpreters. <laughs> <laughs> who are not currently in agreement with whatever that person is saying, they cannot fix their face. <laughs> and it's fantastic. They're human. They're you still human. See... We still have reactions that we can't yeah. hide. Right. <laughs> you see it in Even an the instant. best poker You're like, faces have flinches sometimes. <laughs> You're like, Ooh, this person does not agree with anything this man is saying. And I'm <laughs> here for it. Um absolutely okay you guys well, would enjoy i mean i think that you would like the and it's they're a great group to talk to uh, yeah because i mean i you mentioned it and i think that this is something that's a big thing and you know mine's invisible so people are like oh you know you look great yep okay i'm supposed to look like a quasimodo or i'm supposed to be wheelchair oh, bound. Right. you know it's whatever it's, yeah. it's, 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 so we get the silly too but uh, I think it's great that I think um, I had my aunt say this to me at one point is I would rather someone come over and ask me and ask David 100%. what's like what's wrong and then have someone bop their kid on the mm -hmm. noggin because the kids just educate your children. Right. Allow well, that to happen so that we can actually treat each other with the dignity that we deserve. When you pop your kid about it, it you were stigma. sending the message immediately. Uh -huh. There is something wrong. This yeah. is not normal. Do not be okay with this. Right. Yep. I know that's not their intent. No, nope. right. But, but that is the message you're sending. I don't say that's what the kid associates. Yeah, the kid. Is I don't think most people do it maliciously. I think that they're kind of doing it like, don't stare. Yeah. 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 I don't but, think it's ever, uh, like malicious, like. I don't think they're trying to pop them for acknowledging. I don't think that everybody's hateful and horrible. I think. Right. I think. This, this. Um, but when you pop your kid for that, you send the wrong message. Definitely. And if you just want to calmly tell them, "Hey, let's not say it like that." That's fine. Like I'm down with that. Teach them proper language, and you know yeah. that just one of my respectful favorite, of other people, right? In the community. My favorite experiences are the moms who came up to talk to me and said, look, my kids are curious. I wanted to make sure you were comfortable with talking to them before I just brought them over. Perfect. Are you cool with it? And I'd be like, absolutely. Let's go. That's yeah. fantastic. And perfect. Yeah. And yeah. I find that, I mean, in general, that is the right way to go because mm -hmm. if a person is uncomfortable, they will tell you, and then you respect yeah. that. Yeah. And you, we all and know I have friends who are not, is comfortable with it. I Absolutely. have friends who don't like to talk about it. Me Some too. people, their injury is traumatic. I get not talking about it. Absolutely. Mine wasn't. So cool. Yeah, I'll talk all day. <laughs> well, you can even explain to somebody that not all of us are okay with talking yeah. about it, though. Right. You just yep. explain something. I mean, you just you taught somebody something just saying what you just said. Yep. And it's exactly. better to have that conversation, in my opinion, than the bopping the message. Yep. So let me let me get to my kind of final questions here I have for you on this because I kind of want to know what could like so what could promotions do that would meet your support needs and improve your experience like what is like I don't and it doesn't have to be one big major thing but what are 
maybe a couple, a few things. I mean, obviously the, the things that seem most obvious to me is like, make it clear where I can buy handicapped seating, make right. it clear who I can speak We're, to. Make it clear where the handicapped put, parking is. Put a freaking section in your ticketing or yep. your on your website that says, people with support needs, Please this. click yeah. this number so yeah. that you're not left out of the out, out in the cold. Sam, do you remember how crazy it was finding handicap parking at Double or Nothing? Oh the my dude told gosh. us to like circle around it like was nine a times. Nightmare to find parking so that he could get close enough because they were going to send me to media parking first, and then that was like a. Um, it was nowhere near it was several for, lots away yeah and then so we oh, finally Jesus. yeah we had to drive through various <laughs> it took us a while to find parking thank goodness we left our hotel the one the only good thing about our hotel was that it was like five minutes away Close. so mm. we left at enough time that we could since the parking situation was so terrible that we had time to like go through all that and still make it in before the buy-in started and all that. But it's yep. a good thing because once we got inside, Nikki and Doug's seats didn't exist anymore. Yeah. It and took so, us like, like at least yeah. half an hour to get that handled. Yeah. And then we um, waited and then we like, after the show, we, well, I had to go down to the media scrum. So Nikki and Doug had to go back to the car and like wait in the car for like an yeah, hour. Yeah, technically I could have gotten a media pass too, but <laughs> yeah, I, guess I didn't so. want them to accidentally <laughs> listen to my show. <laughs> um, <laughs> and then I don't know what we were, Nikki, we were just like, Nikki's the assistant or something like that. Yeah. But yeah and then they had to like, so they had to wait like an hour on me. And so luckily like parking was cleared out. By <laughs> yeah. It was so then like we got the back to the hotel left. and our stuff was, our stuff was still like it was locked in a room because like when we this is a very long story so i won't get into all of it yeah the whole basically the hotel didn't have our room ready so we had to lock everything oh we yeah got so we were not, but yeah. it wasn't yeah. it they were so underprepared because it was like it was memorial day weekend it was every everybody was there they had no clue that there was an event at Daly's place, which is literally five minutes away. Like the staff had no, so they were severely, like, that's why we booked that hotel. Right. They were severely underprepared bad. for us. And so we were not the only one. I'll, I'll, there are a bunch of us that had our stuff was locked up in a closet because we mm -hmm. couldn't wait to check in because we had to go to the event. Like right. we had to go and like we were yeah. eating, we ate dinner in the lobby. We had, we got DoorDash and all the we, other people waiting were like, Oh, why didn't I think of that? Yeah, oh we door dashed yeah. in and we were in the park. Parking was a nightmare just to get into the hotel. And so we door dashed it while we were in line so that we could order our food. Nikki and I were doing makeup in the bath in the in the lobby bath. Or no, we did makeup in the lobby and had to go change in the lobby bathroom. Yep. Because I couldn't, because with media, you can't wear. You can't just wear whatever. Right. Yeah. So I did go to, yeah, uh, it was ugh, that it was. Uh, so thank God the show was really great because the rest of that whole trip was a nightmare. So, <laughs> so he, bad. in my head for the major companies, like Indies, like I said, they're pretty much doing it right. In my experience, they are, they have somebody to check on you. Um, right. and a lot of times it's the promoter themselves because mm -hmm. you don't want to get that rep for not being welcome. Uh, what I call the cripple bubble <laughs> is not very big. So if one of us has a problem, we're all going to know about it. Yep. Um, so I would say what you were saying, the clear labeling of everything is a start. Absolutely. Make sure there's signs, you know, your ticket takers at the door. Like Bojangles is weird because once you get past the door, no one works there. Yeah. <laughs> like there are people in the like concession stand and people at the merch stand. That's it. There's no ushers. There's nobody to ask. You're just on your damn own. Yeah. And like, or if you do find them, like they disappear within, like you'll see them once and then you never see them again. Um. <laughs> so I think clear labeling is a start. The companies themselves I don't think it would be a bad idea to have like one of your merch guys or one of your, um, you know, guys you maybe don't use as much like Sean Dean who does other things, make them the 
guy who goes out and checks the venue to make sure all the ADA stuff is good to just swing by and check and go, okay, you can't tell me one person at AEW couldn't do that. Yeah. I mean, they definitely have, and they've got a community outreach, like at double or nothing. That's community. We were friends with the ref. Right. Like we, uh, guy who used to do production for AEW, we have known for years from our local promotion. And like, he came and talked to us. Great dude. But he was there only to talk to us because we're friends. Right. He wasn't there to check. You can't tell me. It would be 10 minutes mm -hmm. and you could change the experience. Um, Because 99% of the time, it's all going to be good. Right. Um, But those times it's not, you know, let's say AEW had responded to me. Super easy to make that experience worth it by saying, okay, well, when we're in Charlotte, we'll give you one free ticket. Cool. Done. We're good. And also acknowledging you would be nice. Yeah. yeah and acknowledging yeah. that there's an issue. That's the thing. Like, it yeah, makes absolutely. them say, look, we understand it's Twitter. They're going to miss things. However, Doug tweeted at them. I tweeted at them. Nikki tweeted at them. I think one of our promoters friends tweeted at I them. think they did too and like not one of us got a any type of recognition not even like not even a liked tweet to even be like hey I saw this like it, nothing like I was gonna say they're just lucky I don't do like a bunch of media anymore because <laughs> man could have blasted them <laughs> well maybe the next time I do a media scrum <laughs> yeah Tony Khan you why got is your talking about so bad you're practically the reason we had a forbidden door ladies match, so. <laughs> yeah, true. Yeah, I guess when this when we clip this, for, well, even the whole show, but then when we clip it, we're gonna have to like at everybody. Like, uh, you need why to not? watch. I this. think it's important. I think it is. Yeah. It is important. Out. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. I would agree. All right. Well, I think. We should have a little chat about some of the other issues that are going on. And Doug is going to hang with us and he's going to yeah. talk wrestling. He's a nerd out with us because yeah. he's speaking awesome. of nerd out. I started a club for that at work this week. Uh huh. In one hour, I had 142 kids. What? Awesome. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Love it. I don't, I don't know what I'm going to do about that because <laughs> there's only two teachers and 142 kids. But, yeah. It's all. Yeah, it'll be yeah. all virtual, though, right? Well, yeah, it's all virtual, but it's still. I mean, that's still a lot. Chaos. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that makes it a little bit more uh, manageable, maybe. <laughs> yeah, I had to take away their right to unmute themselves because they kept talking over me. I'm like, uh, uh mm -mm. y'all gotta hush. <laughs> no. Uh, but yeah, let's go. All right. So yeah, I will tell you now if you're watching to hear this part. Uh. Mel and I have discussed that we are so sick of rumors. I'm tired of reading them. I'm tired of thinking about them. I'm tired of discussing them. So we will not be doing that today and probably not going forward because I just, I'm over it. Yeah. <laughs> just, I don't, I'm so tired. It's, of, it's all I'm, dirt sheets anyway. Rumors like, is rumors. When right. did dirt sheets what it become is. gospel? Well, depends on who you ask. Yeah. <laughs> it's, I don't know. I can't. Until something happens at this point, I don't want to. It's like, yeah. put it out there. It's out there. You wrote your story. You did your thing. That's right. great. I'll read who I feel comfortable reading. But in the meantime, like, there's so much speculation. Right. I don't like watching the national news <laughs> because they do the speculation game about something. Mm -hmm. We used to do the thing when some break, big breaking news would happen where it was like, we're not watching right now because no one knows anything and they're not going to know anything for at least 24 hours. So I'll watch the tiny little, I'll put the Twitter trends on and make sure that <laughs> nothing is like headed towards us that I need to run away from and that I can even maybe be like get away from. Yeah. And otherwise... I'll check in in 24 to 48 hours when you actually have answers and you're not just sitting here going over and over the possibilities that could happen. 
or weeks and weeks, depending on the story. All right, like, Jesus it God. takes forever. Well, we've all been worked. <laughs> but yes, no, I agree. Uh, but we have some actually like, uh, the one thing I did want to point out is that last week I had asked, uh, was the New Japan show at $300 a ticket and <laughs> in a tiny uh, 21 or 3,000. 3,100, I think, is what we saw on Wikipedia. Venue, uh, was that going to bring in the uh, bring, bring the noise, bring it the people? Did. And in fact, because Doug had here, the same question, our friend sent us the ticket prices. That was Doug. Doug's like, Is New Japan going to be able to, uh, people going to pay that for New Japan? The answer like, is yes. Yes, we they are do. literally not running local shows right now. Because they think there's not enough money. Yeah. And then that happens. I'm like, okay, right. cool. Enjoy. Yeah. Your day, and then this wasn't even, and it's not even a Madison Square Garden show. Nobody knows who's going to be yep. on the card. I mean, they saw the ad, the commercial that aired during the G1 final and then has circulated on and has been posted to Twitter. It does have Okada in it. It does have Tanahashi in it. Uh, it does have people from Strong because Filthy Tom is in the ad. And then, of course, we know we're getting the stardom women. So it's basically three shows are being represented in one show. So I think yeah. that's probably where it came from. And then now Jay White can probably say that he single-handedly sold out the, the Palladium. The Palladium. Yeah, <laughs> Times Square. I'm sorry, the Palladium Times Square. Thank you. Because <laughs> he's in the ad. And even if he wasn't there for the main show, he's obviously still heavily featured on Strong. That guy. Um, yeah. He just can't stop selling places out. He just, everybody <laughs> just wants to sell them out. So, yeah. yeah. But, uh, yeah, the pre-sale sold out, like, super quick. And then the next day when tickets went on, or I guess it was the next day or the day after, when they went on sale to the general public, like, Obari tweeted, and he it was a screenshot, and there were literally two seats that were popping up on his screen. <laughs> so it sold out. The question back. is, and the, are there handicap seats? <laughs> Very good question. We need and somebody who's going to that somebody who's going to that show mm -hmm. at Power Bombshells and tell us. Yes, please. If or you are, if you're not, if you don't know beforehand after the show, please. I'm gonna do us. some research. I'm gonna tell look us. up Palladium's ADA accessibility. You should, All right? Because yeah, they've redone it. I think, or like they've redone that because it used to be. It's had like several name changes, and they did a couple things to it. So it sounds so. That would be very interesting. And I finally saw that floor set up. It gave me a little bit of an idea of how they did that. So that makes yeah. sense. So they must have chair the chairs that you can yank out of there. And yeah, I've, I've worked at many proscenium style theaters that have a whole segment of seats that you can just move those guys right on out of there and make a flat surface. Right. So. It's not telling you anything. Oof. No. Uh -oh. bad, bad look. No. Is there no? Terrible no. optics. FAQ. Do you have ADA accommodations? When you arrive at the venue, oh boy. please inform Palladium Times Square security at the entrance who will ensure you are taken care of. That's your job. <laughs> we suggest you arrive early when doors open to no ensure shit. we can accommodate your request prior to, to showtime. To make sure. So you yeah, can't even guarantee it before you of? Yeah. Y'all's business daddy might get mad. Go fuck yourself. <laughs> oh my god. That's terrible. I'll never go to that venue. No. Thank God we decided uh, not to buy tickets to that. I mean, I, <laughs> that's not like yeah, a show. That I we really all... want to go to New York right now. Yeah. While COVID is still <laughs> Nikki a and thing. I, well, it's, yeah. I, I, was telling, I was telling Mel about this. Nikki and I will actually be at a concert in Durham that night. So we will have to watch it later. But still, uh, that's in uh, in 2022. And they've done renovations recently from what their Wikipedia yep. says. Like they updated was... it a few, uh, several years ago, like that. So there's no excuse. No, I went to New York, like Manhattan, in 2005. Mm -hmm. Surprisingly accessible. Oh, like God. it, it I was can't crowded. But trying it to get around that bad. city. Oof. Well, I had a buddy who like frequented there and was in a chair, so he like knew all the tricks. <laughs> like nice. you can't use the elevators because they all smell like pee. Oh, that's um, a lot of Manhattan. You, <laughs> you hold on to the two escalator rails. Your wheelchair will go up the escalator. So, yeah, we did a lot of that that day. Wow. Yeah. 
I mean, all right. So let's talk about the big uh, elephant in the room. I don't know something that actually it's there's no elephant here. I think no. that this is it's just very what we that, know what's there. Um, this elephant has been here for years. It's, it's the sitting. elephant that they don't want to pay attention to. That it's only they, an elephant because they are doing the shoving the animal. elephant out of the way and. Hoping it's like when Dan. It's like away. when Dan Housen was trying to curse Slim J and moved Sunny Kiss out of the way so he did not curse her, <laughs> made her move, and so he could curse. He could curse Slim J. That's basically how they treat this situation. <laughs> they just move it out of the way. So people... we had an unexpected, and from the best that I know, because I couldn't find a human, and even in the big important places, who knew that this was even coming. This was an actual surprise. Yeah. Where Thunder Thunderosa came out this week on Dynamite and said that she was injured and that she was, at first she said relinquishing the belt, and then she said uh, she was vacating the belt and that there would be a four-way match at all out i believe a four-way match to claim the interim women's championship mm -hmm. so if that is it was a little unclear so and i don't know if that got ironed out on rampage because i haven't watched. i did i watched rampage um I don't really think it unless i missed it which is possible because i was i mean i was watching but i also wasn't like super listening to everything that was happening except for like they did a little the, i did pay attention a little bit more to the they had a really short cm punk segment but that's because i knew i was going to write an article about it so let's <laughs> pay attention a little bit more um and i think it was so I, if as far as i know like that's still how it stands and they haven't nobody has clarified like as far as aw goes what the injury is there have been reports that Thunder Rosa has been working injured for most of the year. Um, she has some bulging disc issues um, and has been working through pain um, and has gotten to the point where she cannot walk um, some days. She did say she did go on Busted Open and she talked about the situation. I have not listened to the entire interview. I do. I did listen to the clip that was on Twitter. Uh, and Thunder Rosa said that she was working from her bed because she could not get up she could not walk she Oof. said the day before was very bad she was very in a lot of pain uh and she was she's like i can do the show from my bed and she's like so i guess she uh it almost seemed like she may continue to do busted open appearances because she can do it from bed um she is taking a social media break uh she's done this in the past where she has taken social media breaks and she has her her uh her I don't think he's her manager I'm, or maybe he is, but he will, he will basically respond to things uh, and they can at her. So it sounds like no, nobody knows what the time frame is. They don't, they have not said if there's going to be surgery. Um, and I can imagine like, cause my sister has, has been dealing with back injuries for the last couple of years. So I can only imagine what Thunder Rose has been going through. And if it's to the point where she can't walk, you know, that's scary. That's <laughs> I was going to say my wife had that last December. Mm -hmm. Um, was not great. Was no, not no. a good time. No. Yeah. Where, where I too. think she took the break. For some reason, the internet turned on her. And it was like, the rumor. It was the rumors. It was the Britt Baker. It was even before the rumors. Like just well, it was, there was there was the sandbagging. It was the situation, sandbagging situation with Marina Shapiro. Now, now has to be questioned if she was here. If she was working hurt, that's what people are. That's what people are saying. Is that's they're wondering something that you she... need to maybe re-examine. Was that that came out of the locker room, and we don't know why that came out or why that was thrown out into the and who was saying women. it? Because there are. It sounds like, and I do believe there's probably legitimate heat between some of them because it's just gonna heat in the locker gonna, room. But it's that's gonna happen. <laughs> that's gonna happen because in a lot of just general workplaces, you're not not always gonna get along with people. I was gonna say there's work. heat in any group any, of people. Every right. working <laughs> environment. Yeah. So that's where that kind of came from. There's also I have heard some things um from somebody who is in the uh, somewhat involved in the Texas scene. Uh, where, which is where Thunder Rosa has her Mission Pro base out of. There's been some things that have come out of there where she maybe has not been the greatest or has maybe thrown some people under the bus 
supposedly, or some people, and that's the thing I keep hearing. Some people have these awful interactions with her and then some have really positive interactions with her. Um, and some people are like, well, are they getting, are these women that are, she's paying to work that not paying to say these things, but because she pays them and they work mission pro. And then are these women who can't get booked? Like, so there's a lot of things. So I think that's, then there's that there's, there's the stuff with the sandbagging thing. Or um, is it also days she was feeling better with her back? She's great. And nice. Right. And days she's in the excruciating pain. Yeah. That's right. Hard I mean, what a people. great point. That, yeah, like, exactly. I have chronic shoulder problems. And yeah. Like, pain makes you freaking nuts. Pain makes you a dick. Mess you. Yeah. Like it doesn't matter who you it does. Are. You're that's right. exactly right. And yeah. I've um, had doctors tell me so. <laughs> yeah. I mean, so not quite in that technical of like, language, but right. Yes. Yeah. It, they, it I mean, the neurological it, toll that it does take on your ability to reason and your ability to deal with emotional situations and all those things that's out there. There's proof. There's actual yeah. science. The so I could stuff. see like, cause she, as far it's as I could tell before they hung the belt on her, she was a workhorse. Yeah. Not just for AEW, but she was all over the country, all right. out of the country. Indie, 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 indie. Yeah, and she was doing a she lot of probably stuff. probably messed herself and, up. Yeah, doing so much. Mm -hmm. You can't run that schedule and Forever. it not take a toll on right. your body. And yeah. then I've also no seen like a couple of reports saying, which again, I don't know how much of this is true, but they've seen some reports saying that she put a lot of pressure on herself as champion and maybe was um, just has having a problem. Some people are saying that she, they think she's having some issues mentally, not just, just because she has put so much pressure on herself. She's also dealing with an injury that she's compensating for. Like, it seems like it's this perfect storm of things um, that have maybe boiled over. Um, and maybe she's made her not have some great experiences with certain people. Um, and maybe she had, cause there's been, there was like rumors. There was a interview that came out yesterday where they talked to eight different people. And some of the people said that like, she was screaming at an extra for not knowing what to do or in their match or something like that. But then again, mm -hmm. is this going, is this related to, and I'm not making excuses for her cause she's a grown woman. Um, yeah. but is that where some of this is coming from? And I think that's a very fair question to ask is, is some of her injury getting to where she's like, you said, it's changing her personality or it's changing on the days where she's in a lot of pain. Is it making her meaner or act in a way that she normally wouldn't for something injury like that? and mental health combined. And she right. has spoken is, about her mental health on her taco blog. A recipe for clear. awful. Like okay. I, I'll tell y'all straight up. Um, and I've talked about this publicly, so I don't really care. I have anxiety issues. I did not get daily treatment for them until a couple of years ago. Mm -hmm. um, I was on Prozac and I started the school year. And it was the roughest group of kids yeah. I ever had. I did things I never thought I would do as a teacher. One, because of the side effects of the medicine, I had a really short fuse. Sure. Two because i had so much pressure on myself to handle it mm -hmm. i had so much pressure to get these kids to a non-chaotic point and i had no support from elsewhere mm -hmm. so if thunder rosa is trying to get the women's division to a point of respect that they deserve to a point of okay y'all hated brit's run let me give you a Brit run, a better than Brit run, mm -hmm. and then can't while she's injured, while she's mm -hmm. doing treatment. I mean, you make choices and you own up to them and you say, oh, yep, yeah, sorry, I screwed up. Um, it It is what it is. Like, there could be details that could come out that would change my opinion of that. Right. Yelling at somebody you work with because you want to have a better show. I mean, that happens. It's right. not, it doesn't make you a terrible person. You can't tell me Moxley or Punk or Hangman have never yelled at somebody. Haven't had an outburst at a TA or a yeah. PA or a or somebody or that something. was, or somebody that had the boom mic in the wrong but spot. People are freaking out. People are people. People are freaking out because it was a badass female, and they're like, 
how dare a female act this way? And Which right. is a great segue to the entire point because I <laughs> right. think that the real here. So um, on the Dynamite show this week, I ha- shout out Jeff Hawkins for yes. making this point. And uh, yeah. I thought that Sam, especially I, I said, make sure that you at least get to this part where Jeff uh, made the comment that um it's something that we've talked about a million billion times is that they didn't treat it uh this was thunder rosa in tears um with the belt over her shoulder having a not interview with tony Schiavone. backstage the human backstage. microphone stand. yeah um he was definitely doing his impression of a human microphone stand in this one. This was not one of Tony Schiavone's uh, brighter moments. Um, giving a sort of outline that we all worked out eventually based on what was going on on the table later after she was done to do a fatal four-way essentially for the interim championship. And that was it. And he made the point that when Ma- uh, Sam Punk dropped the belt, there was a battle royale and there was a tournament and there was a, a fanfare and there were all these things that went on in the company that were, oh my gosh, there's going to be an interim belt. It's got to be a big deal. Moxley picked it up. He made an issue of, of it being interim, um, which was a fantastic storyline. This is what we get for the women. I'm vacating. Uh, here's a four way. I'm doing yep. this backstage singing. It's in 15 minutes. And yep. if you're going to say that you are treating your women and your men equally, or if you are trying to push your women's division, got to push it, then the, the differentiation between the way that the women's championship belt was handled versus mm-hmm. how the men's championship belt were handled were horrible yeah there was a she spent half that promo talking to tony yeah and crying and crying so like and i you have to wonder i'm sure she was upset but then you have to wonder she was standing well that but was she standing there in pain could she feel her because she's talking about how she couldn't hear she can't feel her legs sometimes so is she standing there in pain and is that why she's crying i mean clearly the title enough but like is she in that because she was at times hard to understand because she was getting so upset is was she i i have to wonder now knowing about the back issue she's having was she in pain and they're like hey we're gonna put you in front of a camera right this second i know you're upset but let's use that <laughs> like why is that- couldn't she have well they i mean they even are, when like, go ahead Doug. everyone else what was that like why couldn't she have sat on a couch with JR or like, remember yeah. when FDR came in and they like had all these interviews with Jay, whenever mm-hmm. they want to push somebody, they give them couch time with JR. Yeah. yeah. Why You're is right. that Great not point. happening for the women? Yeah, the women like- always get Shivani with a microphone and yeah. I love Tony Shivani. Shivani. He's great. He Me has too. moments. But it's not. Uh, this was not his fault. This, this was this not was... been going well. No, and I don't know. <sighs> I don't because clearly I do not want to make excuses for the way they treat the women. I don't know when this decision was made because that was also the same day that they had the meeting with the lot. They had the locker room meeting. Post, yeah. The pre and they uh, had, and that was from three. That was apparently that from talk. like three to four. And, you know, apparently it got pretty heavy. Uh, there's been some reports that have come out from the meeting about Kenny Omega has had to put his foot down and just be like, we're not going to do this. We're not going to act like this. So I don't know if there's just because it was so crazy, but it's still not an excuse. So yeah. I don't know why the decision was made for this to be a backstage segment, first of all. Um, and then so there was a tweet that was going around um, where they had like a timer and it was showing the time that CM, uh, something of a CM Punk and something with, uh, with Thunder Rosa. And so I went back and I, I couldn't find the clip today, but her promo was the promo was tweeted. It was 53 seconds. Punk segment on Rampage, or, or where he talked about his foot, was eight minutes. <laughs> her, yeah. her, her speech, her promo was enough to fit in a tweet. 
And I, that's, it's so, and so if you're going to treat, so that right, like we, hers was we, we, enough for a original TikTok when you could only do one minute. <laughs> yeah, seriously. And then they, so then they follow it up with the women's match on top of that was really short. It was, I, I don't have the exact time right this second. It was, I want to say four minutes and 53 seconds. I mean, they did do a little thing at the end where Britt, obviously bear she said she was like i worked through my injury and i or i worked hurt i broke where i wrestled with a broken wrist and that's well, another thing that was yeah. like i that well and see that just i think that goes back to show i mean uh, apparently there is heat between the two of them so is she just being because it wasn't it was almost not a heel thing it was almost more of a little bit of a personal personal like, like she took a shot at her Right. Yeah. Wait, that's, how, that's, that's, case, how that's how it came of off. I don't bullshit. know if that was, I don't know if that was yeah, Brent's intent, but that's how it came off to me. Um, and so, so that whole, just the entire segment from Thunder Rosa to the end of that promo from Brit was just a mess. And then they didn't even really know what was going to happen. Like they didn't, or they didn't really say, uh, or they were like, there's going to be a four way. And then like, it was just that whole thing. And so, and it, to Jeff brought this point up as well. Like when they were doing this, they did, they, they made the interim thing such a big deal. They had freaking Tanahashi. Yep. Wrestle. That's he was supposed to wrestle with Ishii. Ishii had to back out because I think he had a knee injury. So mm -hmm. they replaced him with Hiroki Goto. They had a fantastic match. Uh, and In Tanahashi Japan. obviously ended up winning and Tanahashi yep. wrestled John Moxley for the title. So why can't you bring in somebody? Why can't you? Clearly, they still have a relationship with Impact because we see Chris Saban and we saw Chris Saban on TV. And then Alex Shelley is going to be joining him for a match at All Out. So they clearly have that relationship there. So you could bring in, there's Deanna, there's Mickey James, there's Chelsea Green, there's Savannah Mia Yim. Yeah, there's plenty of women that they could have chosen from. NWA, they've had a relationship for her in the past because clearly that's where, you know, Thunder Rosa was their champion when she was competing um, in AEW. They've sent they women to... They brought up Serena Deeb, who, right. you know... Yeah, I mean... they've had, they had women that they sent to Empower, which Tony, you know, told everybody he paid the women for. <laughs> to, he paid the women to go wrestle at Empower. So, and uh, yeah, and I know, like, because tonight is NWA 74, and so it would be a little bit, maybe it would be a little bit of short notice. Well, then don't do that. Maybe don't do the match at all out. Like do start well, the tournament um, there or have the semifinal. How many women are available from, what's it called? Black Tuesday when Vince fired everyone? Oh yeah. Oh, right. God. Like yeah. there's yeah. still a ton of them out there. Yeah. That and that would been... get you your big reaction and mm -hmm. at least show some respect right and i mean the well and then i mean you know, i like the yeah. idea of having a battle royale for the shot yeah. at it way or something in that right. vein well, way better that, than you know, this. like and this people is... have and you know and i think jeff brought this up but then even uh rafael with daily ddt wrote an article about how they should do a women's concedo battle royale match instead yeah, of it right. being the men this year have it be the women well now have it be the women and they have, didn't that have really. a question mark like one of the people that have you're talking about yeah have a joker they, and then and they have, did it with um a couple years ago with Swole. Yep. That's how yep. Swole like really proved herself was an mm -hmm. opener with Sheeta in yeah. Charlotte and then the Battle Royale, and that's how she got signed. Right, exactly. So you could have that moment, or and then you could have, I mean, that's how they obviously uh, going back to the men's thing. I mean, that's how they introduced Ethan Page. Uh yep. that's how they brought Leah Russian. Um, so they could do that. Even if it's somebody they didn't necessarily sign, you can have them be in that match. And then the winner of that, you know, the Casino Battle Royale, that's who is, you know, that's who you have go on to face. I would rather them do that than what they're doing now. Or and I mean, a tournament, a Battle Royale, something. Yeah, something that makes it seem like you give Special. it Special. Maybe yeah. that makes it feel as important as the championship. Yeah, because that they and put on how the do dudes. they, and it's weird how they, the four women that they picked. Um, I am glad that, you know, because Who now are it the has, four? it's, I know it's Tony Storm, Tony. it's Tony, Tony Storm. Sheeta, Jamie, and Britt. Britt. It has come out since since uh Thunder Rosa has had to uh is having to uh vacate the title. Well, I mean, it still will be an interim championship, so she still has the title. Okay, but well, since, that's good at least. So she um Tony Storm was supposed to win it all out. She was gonna beat Thunder Rosa for the title. Yeah. So but some people have made the argument, and I kind of agree, that Tony should not be an asterisk champion. 
if you're going to make her I the agree. big deal, especially because of the way they've booked her, the, the way they've handled her up until this point, um, Tony should not be a ch an interim champion. And again, at this point, we don't know how long Thunder Rose is going to be out. Yep. This could potentially be a certain, this could potentially be back surgery. And I don't, I mean, in, in that case, it's months no. and months and she's going to like, stuff takes. Yeah. So they yeah. could end up being, she could be, a, this is not a CM Punk thing where CM Punk, you know, CM Punk was gone for two months and we knew from the beginning he was going to be gone two to three months. We have no idea yeah, how long her. Thunder Rose is going to be gone. Um, so then, um, so I, so we, you know, there's obviously been the, the tension between Jamie and Britt. Um, and I kind of get that storyline here. Maybe Jamie costs Britt the title and Jamie takes it for herself. I would not be in the situation we're being given. I would not be mad at that. I just, I do not want that title on Britt Baker. <laughs> I, I really, want, really wish. I don't even, I really wish she was not in the match. I don't want her anywhere near Instead the title. And I Brit, feel like it's almost inevitable that they're going to hang it on her. And, and I think the only Brit, reason they put Ruby in it. Yeah. I would, I would love Ruby to be in it. Uh, it, it should have been. But it she's doing Ruby the working thing. So. I, and so yeah. then, I don't think the main reason I don't think they'll put it on Sheeta is Sheeta has been going back and forth between uh, here in Japan and she's been wrestling a lot in Japan. She's been filming movies and things like that. So I don't think they want her. She's going to be off. To, like she was just in Japan like three weeks ago, two or three weeks ago, I think. And so I don't think they, because I kind of thought maybe they would because, you know, they did the thing with Mox. Mox was champion when they were in the no fans era. So was Sheeta. Um, so I thought, well, maybe they'll kind of do that with Sheeta and let her have a proper title reign in front of the fans. But then I was like, well, she's going back and forth between Japan. Maybe not. So just I am really concerned that they're going to put that that title back on Britain. Maybe put it on Jamie Hayter and see if she can do it. I would that love sounds, them. See, that that would be, Jamie, to me, that's... that would be a way more fun outcome because I would then prefer it's it like, to be Jamie. She's great. She's, I mean, she might. And she have her other moments over. but she looks like yeah. she could really excel she looks like she could go somewhere right and, and you know she has the it. she has the stardom background as well uh oh, just like right. tony does so you know she's got that background um they could still so if they're bringing in ddt women um you know she's got that and you know how kind of how they use thunder rosa in that situation it'd be um, different it'd be right. really and different i don't know Somebody they were I saw it from Lucha Blog. They were like, we don't know how this is going to impact Thunder Rosa's versus Thunder Rosa versus Ty Valkyrie was supposed to be happening at Triple Mania. Oh, that's right. Um, and so clearly they don't. They were like, uh, this was the same night, so that was before we kind of knew about the back problems. Um, so I don't know if they will send this champion in Thunder Rosa because that match was not for the AEW title. It was for Taya's uh, Larinas. Uh, championship. It would have so made I, yeah. so much sense for them to work with AAA and bring in Taya. Yeah, I you, I was just thinking that she like read my mind. Dog. In my mind, I'm like, why not bring Taya into this? Match? They work Taya's with AAA for Taya's Taya's, Taya's, yeah. in, Taya's back in she's Taya's back in Impact, right? Isn't she? Yeah, she's been in because she's yep. been doing the stuff with uh, Jessica and uh, Rosemary in yep. the the uh, Undead Realm, which is we know uh, JD. <laughs> favorite thing that happens <laughs> oh, i mean <laughs> but yeah i know that wwe does things with their women that they didn't do before and that's awesome but i think that the argument that impact has the best women's division in wrestling right now is a very uh viable or at least in north american wrestling or american. In no yeah, yeah yeah in, in north in <laughs> yeah. in, in, in our US. part of the world in yeah. the west i think Western. when wwe lost sasha impact jumped above them uh, yeah. definitely i mean yeah and impact has been and impact even be still hurt. they have been really steady the last couple of years like especially because i've been watching them more with timing matches and things like that and they i mean and we've had the conversation yeah there are some weeks where they have one women's match and that's it and sometimes it's sometimes it's a 14 minute match and sometimes it's four minutes but they generally have storylines and things for their women that's to what do. i was gonna say is so I they feel like they, at least they give them the backstage microphone moments that mm -hmm. the men and, get. And build their characters and things like yeah. that. So this goes, and, you know, thinking about all this, this goes back to the point of why I said a few weeks ago that they need to hire Maria. They yeah. need somebody in creative who can steer them. I and think that would have been know, a better Madison, choice. you know, it sounds like Madison Rain is there for the veteran presence, which I think is really smart 
Um, and I don't know what she can do story, you know, with the creative side of things, but we, Maria has proven that with the women of honor, she's got, and see, and then that goes back to, there's, the, a connection. there's, the, there's the wrestle, the women's wrestle army that she runs. That's a show full of indie women that they could, that Trisha Dora wrestles there, Swole wrestles there, which mm. I, obviously that she's not coming back, but I mean, she, so they've got, um, that Holly dead wrestles there. Uh, Lainey Luck has wrestled there. Oh, like wow. she's got, like, they have a really great caliber of women that they could, send over basically. are we talking about maria canellis uh-huh okay yes yeah i just wanted to make sure because yeah like, and she's because she's kind of angled you know to talk to them but then she's made the point well you know i have a really good relationship with triple h and i think she's sound so when women of honor when she was bringing that when they were focusing on the women of honor last year before all of but, you know, before they were sold to to Tony Khan, uh, Maria revamped her and Bobby Cruz revamped that entire division. And they did a really good job because now the woman who won is Roxy and she's in WWE and she mm -hmm. already won. You know, she's Roxanne there and she's already won the NXT women's title. I mean, she are the tag title and she lost it really quickly, like the next week, because because that's just how they do things <laughs> over sure. there. But yeah, so like the Vince fingers. Yeah. And so <laughs> she can, I think well Maria put. would be a huge asset. Now, I mean, it is, you know, Kenny is back. So I, again, when Kenny was gone, I don't know how involved. Oh yeah. Was Kenny was back. Yeah. I don't know how involved he was with the women's division. While I don't he think was out. Kenny was doing much at all. I don't think so either. Working on the video game. Right. They were trying to move it. Yeah. To the best of what I've read in place, like I do try to read the Observer fairly regularly. I'm not perfect. Mm -hmm. But um, one of the things is that they were trying to work people like Hikaru Shida into the position of doing the creative. Yeah, and I've, for from, I have heard Which that is fine. From, I, I have, just, yeah, I know I, that some of that was a struggle because um, the, I think, language barrier, mm -hmm. which as someone who has started very peripherally to uh, learn Japanese, um, I make it makes Chris Shelton an even bigger hero to me because <laughs> these are not two languages that translate, mm -mm. not even close. When you start to get to Eurasian languages and the Western languages, the ability to make translations gets harder and harder and harder. Mm -hmm. And his, the fact that he is able in his head to process mm -hmm. To it's, well, I have interviews. <laughs> it's con and it's complicated to like because right. you're thinking in two languages and what you I mean the kind of the rules yeah. you think in the I language mean, you're speaking. Code switching even with dialects. Yeah, it's exhausting. exactly what a great point. So it's such a simple thing. Even with a um, communicating yeah. with two different kids that yeah. have two different things that they need, right. and that's any kid in any class in any soccer on mm -hmm. any soccer team I've ever had at any yeah. age. Um, we all yeah. speak a slightly different language, but I think that right. that was a, a creative hitch. Sure. I like Maria also. I think that's a better choice than Madison Rain because I think that Maria has more. Will um, Maria come without Mike? Yeah. If it's, I think depending so. on, If it's for a creative position and she's. Okay. For that kind I mean, of thing, if she's not wrestling, which she, I don't think she even would be, I don't see her needing she to doesn't, do she that doesn't justification in, match. She doesn't wrestle in impact at all. Like she's just. I just don't see it. I don't see she her having to do it. Mm -mm, she's she not. Yeah. I think she's risen up, in my opinion, and this is someone like she randomly started following me years ago <laughs> on Instagram. Probably don't you love those I moments? Was, yeah, like, that's whoa, a lot of fun. Like it was really, really funny. I. I didn't know because like at first I was like, wait a minute. Can, Cause they were going, she was going by Canellis and of course they have their gimmick names. And I was like, wait, wait, oh my gosh. And so like, she started following me and then he started following me and I <laughs> chatted peripherally with them for a few seconds, but it was very much about how they were handling their shit, like mm -hmm. mature yeah. adults right. and not like yeah. little babies who, and I get it because, again, having worked in theater and understanding backstage and performance art, I was a stage manager. I was a prop manager. I, I And I've also been in locker rooms because I was in sports until I switched to theater. Right. And so I, I know the politicking and BS that goes on in both places mm -hmm. and how ridiculous it gets. I think someone like that, a stabilizing force 
Well, and that's been the conversation, uh, you know, this week with all these rumors about like, you know, how things are getting out of hand and, you know, that type of thing. But they've been saying, you know, we need it. There needs to be a veteran back there who's going to be like, I mean, sounds like Kenny has kind of stepped into that spot. At least last week he was like, this is, we're not doing this. So, but so, and then, so Maria could be that type of a person for the women's division, but I think she will go to bat for them and be like, you can't give Thunder Rosa 53 seconds and give CM Punk eight minutes. That's if you well, are presenting these, if you want us to believe that you be, like, if you want us to believe that you believe that the AEW world championship and the women's world championship are on the same level, then you have to present it that way. And it makes me think because Tony, um, some of the, several of the media calls I've been on when people have brought up the TNT championship, they've caught it a secondary title and he stopped them. And he was like, no, it is equal to the AEW world championship. Like they are not, he was like, they are equal. So then the women, and he has said before that the women's title is equal, like in a media call when it was like, I guess it was around the time the women were going to main event or something like that. And he, but he doesn't present it to us that way. So maybe even if in his head, (laughs) that's how he sees them. They are not presented to the fans that way. And not even the TBS championship has, is even, uh, you know, they kind of backed off a little bit with Jade. I know they're saving her for Athena, and we're finally getting that match, but it's not, you know, we're not featuring been... it anymore. No, I mean, they she's aren't. not even like, I mean, she's even kind of for, and, and I'm not like, I am the first kind of like, I get why Jade is there, but eh, I'm that girl. But mm-hmm. at the same time, it's like, but where has she been? And yeah, I'm been doing... way more interested in Stokely than Jade. Amen. Like every time Stokely's on the screen, I'm like, Ooh, what's he doing? But when it's Jade, I'm like, okay. See, and I'm not like me and Nikki, braces. when Jade is on, my sister and I are like, Oh, what is she wearing? Like, what is her, yeah. what does she have to she's say? She's definitely like, got like, so she's, yes, yeah, so we're definitely, so we have that with her, but uh, you know, that's probably, uh, I'm, a, you know, there were rumors too, that, uh, Chris Sotlander before she got injured was supposed to, to win at grand at, uh, that grand slam that show. Uh, so I assume it would have been the TBS title. Um, the one especially. Is, so yeah. Ours are Ash question, mm-hmm. yes. We know that locker room male or female is filled with trained veterans who do training on a weekly or daily basis when they're not at shows. Right. Um, I, I would absolutely love for women to be in charge of the women. Like I, I think it's just a better situation Mm -hmm. all around to put people who understand. And even if you're going to keep somebody like a Kenny Omega, who obviously Kenny Omega has a a passion for women's wrestling and helping them, he still needs a woman so that women can go through. And and so Maria. (laughs) I was a certified sports coach. And could I coach a women's wheelchair basketball team? Sure. Sure. Should I? Probably not. I'll tell um, you, my uh, father had a, my father coached for seven, eight years, coached the girls junior high uh, soccer oof. team. And he was very good at picking assistant coaches that offset the things that he needed. Right. And, and But the I, uh, cipher that he finally came upon was that he took one of the moms of a bunch of the the boys that he had also coached since they had been young and said, Hey Jane, you want to be my assistant coach? And that became his assistant coach for many, many years after, because it gave 13 to 15 year old girls, Ooh, that's a tough age. That's a <laughs> no kidding. Ble- I mean, <laughs> right. It, tween anybody, tween boys, tween girls, but tween girls, particularly because of all of the things that go on in our brains that are right. external, because <laughs> boys have a lot of different internal things that go on and whatever. But the bottom line is that was the big helper for him. Yeah. And he was, I mean, he didn't care he was going to pick the best person to help him do the best for his teams. And that was universal. Um, But like he would always get, get that tamper, but that we are friends with a lot of people who could do exactly that in that locker room. Mm -hmm. Um, We, 
I mean, I can name two off the top of my head who we're on first name basis with. Yeah. Who could absolutely help creatively, mm -hmm. but also if they had the right support with them, yeah, you would see a change in the division. Right. And right. It, it makes me wonder if Tony has, because he's primarily, I mean, football and football are not going to have a lot of like i'm sure they have lady executives and lady production yeah. assistants and everything but those two sports aren't lady driven um, um I, i'm a huge nfl fan but i know that i wouldn't you know be as valuable to an nfl locker room as some you know some other like equipment boy or right. whatever i mean so. one of the biggest voices in that locker room is aubrey thank you god can't tell me Okay, yeah, she's a ref, but you can't tell me she couldn't help that division. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, Definitely. Especially well, she's got if, an outside objective thing. She's not wrestling. Yeah. yeah. Which, and it actually gives her an this, objectivity. Any of this stuff about what a mess it is is true, and we're not yeah, getting right. into it. Exactly. Yeah. But if any of it is true, there are people in that locker room who will put a stop to it you just have to put them in the position to do it. Mm -hmm. And I get it. Adults suck. There's a reason but I don't work do environments education. are hard. Yeah. Oh, I, I used to, thank you. I, uh, same here. I used to love working with kids. My, and I, I would tell people, you know, and they would, how can you work with kids? And cause I did two to 12. I, that was, I went yeah. all over. Kids the are great. Kids, kids are easy. And I but. said to them, I'll tell you why is because a five-year-old is supposed to act that way. Yep. <laughs> And if I'm out in retail or restaurants or something else, and I have a 50 year old acting like a five year old, my instinct at that point is to start talking to them like I would talk to the five year old. But a five year old will get in trouble. To, uh, exactly. <laughs> yep. A five year old has five years of experience as a human, and they're supposed to act that way. <laughs> yeah. So to me, and that goes for any age kid, some are harder than others. Sometimes it's, you have tough days. Well, uh, and. But let's, I'll work with kids all day long before I have to work with grown-ups. Let's be honest. The AEW locker room is a child. It is a three-year-old child. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. And there are growing pains. Point. Yeah. So do something about it. Yeah. A meeting is great, mm -hmm. but I can't tell you the number of class meetings I had and nothing changed. Well, who, right. spoke, who speaks up in that meeting? Yeah, we've all nice. been in that meeting once mm -hmm. in our lives. I think yeah. that we've all been professionals long enough to have been mm -hmm. in um, that meet. Me so where it's like, because because I'm definitely gonna say anything in front of all the bosses and all the yeah. VPs oh, and yeah. all that. And then especially, and this is just something that I mean, let's be real, as a woman, is even harder. Yeah. Yeah. Right. It is. And especially yeah. in a male-dominated <laughs> industry. Just, yeah, exactly. it is. Like, yeah, in a male-dominated industry. Yeah, you've got. No matter how nice your opposite. boss is, and no matter how hands-on he wants to be. Yeah. It doesn't matter. That's uh, yeah. Yeah, so my, my field is the exact opposite. I'm like the only guy who does what I do. But <laughs> right. <it's fun. laughs> um, you yeah. people with your specializations, you get out of here. <laughs> my sister is specialized i have a couple of friends who are very specialized like i'm like they might have uh done the right thing they might have, that <laughs> specialization thing may be the way to go yeah <laughs> yeah but, but yeah so i just think the whole thing just goes back to so the backstage stuff and then it's just the way this, the women are presented and it goes back to the whole reason I time matches to begin with and you know, they're not getting the TV time or there's not enough women getting TV time. And so, yes, you can make the argument for this title match that there's two women in it who have never wrestled for the title before uh, against two women who have, who are champions. Um, so sure. That's a, a fair argument, but you're, it's a thrown to you. Well, that's another reason. Like, I don't know when this decision was made for their, for Thunder Rosa to vacate. Cause she said in that interview, I am not cleared to wrestle. Yeah. So that's it. That's final. And so sure. So did that come about on Tuesday or Wednesday? Maybe it did, but that still doesn't mean like that you don't give her, it just, it continues to play into the fact that you present your women differently than your men and you treat your women, uh, you present your women as being less important, even the champions. Yep. <laughs> and that's, a, that's a huge it, problem. It's not a, 
<laughs> you're just stating a fact. There's not right. an argument to be mm -hmm. had here. No. The data is there. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm sure when you post this, people are going to blow up y'all's <laughs> Twitter and be like, no, they're respect. No, they're not. 800% more time for CM Punk to do nothing mm -hmm. than Thunder Rosa got to tell us why she's going to be out. And she didn't even get to say, yeah, she didn't get to yeah. say any of that. She just, yeah, exactly. and bless her heart, she was clearly devastated, yeah, probably clearly. in a ton of pain. And I was like, but you, so maybe they didn't think she could, so, I mean, you know, maybe they didn't think she could walk down to the ring. Maybe she was in a lot of pain that day and they didn't want to put her or put her in the position where she's in the ring and she can't get out. Like, I, sure. There's a, a little bit of that, but then, like you said, have the sit down interview with, with Tony, yep. have her sit down for seven or eight minutes, talk about the doctor hasn't, I mean, sure. I know she saved some of this for busted open. I can kind of get that but she can go more in depth there, but on TV, tell me why she can't wrestle. Not when you have Britt Baker coming out there. I wrestled with a hurt, right, you know, I wrestled means... with a broken wrist or whatever the hell her injury was. Like, I didn't like that. <laughs> I didn't either, but and, that didn't yeah, sit and, well with me. No, especially with everything else that supposedly is happening. Um, but she, um, and it didn't come off as the hill. It came off very personal. So then have sit Thunder Rosa down and say, okay, or have her sit down with Tony. The doctors have, I've been dealing with his back injury for months. I've wrestled as your champion hurt. I went to Japan hurt. I have, it's gotten worse. The doctors have not cleared me. Um, I have to, I can no longer compete right now. I don't know what the next steps are. Maybe there's surgery. Maybe it's rehab. Uh, I, I will be out of action for an undetermined amount of time. Um, and then, you know, go from there and then have Tony explain there. Okay. So we're going to have the four, you know, we're going to have the, the four way match, uh, for the title, um, uh, because this was so last minute, this is how we decided to handle it. just anything, but it more than the 53 seconds. And yeah, I think it's like, just extremely, and it goes back before, sorry, I don't mean to cut you yeah, off, but, but it goes back to her very first interview as champion. She came the, when she won the title, she came out on dynamite. She got barely a word out. She barely said anything, and Nyla jumped her from behind. Vicky Guerrero was yeah. screaming at her. Yeah, and Nyla, yeah. and and that was it. And people were saying there, they were like, I, they were worried that that was going to set the tone for her title reign. And now looking and back did. at it, it did. Well, if you look at the way that they handled this very situation, it exactly did define it. Any other baby face, rather than wrapping up that promo with talking about their friend go win it my friend would have right. gotten to say but i promise you yeah. i will be back as soon as i can i'll be working she had to, she say, didn't that, get to say any of that yeah she had to say it on the busted open interview because she said at the, the end of the clip because in that clip she addressed she was like I, she said don't read dirt sheets because not everything you read is true and like she crammed all of that still and busted open and like but she said and she said i'll be back and i will work harder than ever and i will be back and i will be your champion like she she got it there on busted open she didn't even get that on AEW television that's <laughs> that's not right <laughs> but we have plenty of time at the end of the show for kenny to come stare at omega and don Callis to pretend like he's holding him back yeah, and we have this the stuff with. Yeah, I mean, they had they had time, they had time for <laughs> for Billy Gunn to wrestle his child, which that should have been a. I mean, you can make the argument that should have been a dark match, but uh, for At some least Billy Gunn, is, Billy Gunn is still very over. The acclaimed are hugely over. Stoke was involved. He's obviously very over. So clearly, they're going to get that on TV. That is a rampage match. It's a rampage <laughs> match, though. Yeah. As a matter of fact, I think it probably would have made some of the rampages that I've seen recently better. Me too. Oh, yeah. You should see. I complain to my editor all the time. How am I going to get 300 words out of this? It's getting <laughs> rampage. I, it bugs me. And this is for another day because we're getting uh, pretty well long in the yeah, my... here. Mm -hmm. But uh, <laughs> it's uh, it used to be rampage used to be unmissable in my world mm -hmm. where it was almost becoming the better show. It was and, yeah, for a while. It and then hard. it's like, I don't know, maybe the last six, eight months, maybe since the ROH thing, I'm not sure if that's exactly when the moment was, but it just has become, it's gone from completely, it's gone from unmissable to, I think I didn't watch one in the last four or five weeks. I just didn't. I was like, no, I don't care. 
I turn I, it on. In I the listened to the spoilers already. I've read. Yeah, a recap I mean, I still already. watch it because I enjoy. Like, I enjoy some of the stuff that they do there. But then it's gotten where, like, we've talked about it, where they've had like the women had like two minute matches. Like there was a yeah. few weeks ago, the women wrestled for two and a half minutes. But I mean, and I then, watched Dynamite live. Yeah. I used to watch Rampage live. Yeah, and I still. Has, I mean, part of the reason I do is because I cover it. Cover it. Um. And I see, and, and then I'm a, and I, also was, I was at the point where I was covering <laughs> where I was doing recaps and had to do everything. But now we've done it to where basically what's the one important thing that happened on the show? Because they know people aren't watching Rampage. So that that's how yeah. we've changed our coverage is now we say, what's the one big thing that happened on the show? And then sometimes I'm like, I, how am I going to get 300 words? <laughs> out of that like and even with the cm punk thing like his thing where he talked about his injury and ended up having a broken foot again that segment was they posted it on twitter it was 58 seconds i think Ooh. and it was just uh the doctor followed him backstage he said i can't put any weight on it he was still walking with a steel and uh i think it was a referee and like so they did that and then i'm like how am I supposed to get 300 words just on that? Because I was like, that's what people are going to care about. They're not going to care about any of the. They're not going to care about the mixed tag match that they had. They're not going to care about Wardlow. Uh, no, was it not Wardlow? Yes, Wardlow wrestled Ryan Nemeth. Power Powerhouse wrestled some. Uh, who wrestled somebody who must have been local. I have not seen him on. I haven't even seen him on Dark or Elevation before. Um, they You're did not making me want to go back to my yeah, DVR so, right that now. Like yeah, yeah. Like so that's, the, no, I the main event. The, the main event was good though. The main event was Claudio okay. versus Dustin Rhodes. Oh, that's right. Oh, yeah. okay. that is I worth that. watching because Dustin watching. always right. puts on. Right. A, you know, Dustin always Dustin's steps Dustin. up, and, and I also always get excited because I will always pop for a Dustin Destroyer. Except for now, they refer to it as a Code Red when he does it, but they were calling it a Dustin Destroyer in the beginning. But I will. <laughs> You can I will, call it what you want. On I will show. pop for that every time. But that match was solid. It was very good. Um, so I would, you could probably just fast Definitely. forward to that. That's <laughs> you could just point. fast forward I... to the main event, basically. <laughs> but yeah. Also, yeah. Mel, welcome to a Sam and Doug podcast. Like, yeah. I don't think we've ever recorded in less than two and a half hours. Oh, no. I, in fairness, <laughs> this is only probably about 30 minutes more than Sam and I. Yeah, we, and I we try. We try. Mel but... and I usually get two hours every every week. Gotcha. We try for We're thinking an... of turning this bad boy into a, uh, <laughs> or at least making an audio version available. So if that's yeah. something that people are interested in, just hit us up on it. Yeah, Twitter, we've but... talked about, well, I mean, we've tried hitting like the hour and there's definitely no way we can go an hour with what we talk about just because we watch so much stuff usually and then yeah. there was crap like Vince McMahon shit kept happening that we had to address and like MJF happened and Jeff Hardy y all, happened y all yeah see the a picture this week where his uh companion had her yes. purse in her mouth yes because <laughs> I asked what are you I doing asked that too because it got sent to one of the slack groups I'm in and I was like is her purse in her mouth and somebody said don't kink shame her Sam <laughs> Oh Jesus! Can can I tell Mel my theory? Yes, of please. What I thought was going to happen. Oh yes, promo? yeah. I meant to bring all this right. up. Doug has an interest. Had uh, before we knew a little bit more about all it, out. This it could still happen. It could. It, hey, it's all right. I want to hear it. If CM Punk's injury is real. <laughs> so last year, Darby Allen dropped best in the world, and everyone lost their minds. Right, and everybody mm. was like, "Oh my God, CM Punk was coming back." And that was the most improbable thing that happened in wrestling. Moxley started talking about my time is now. <laughs> so my theory is not awesome theory. <laughs> Tony did some like finagling and he's got John Cena coming all out. <laughs> he told me this in text and I was like, we told our text group and we were like, no. <laughs> And then I, but I kept talking myself into it. Like, he did. It he made did. so much sense. I, and then I was like, mm. he did. Then he went he to made dinner it. with Vince. I'm like, probably not, but maybe he was having dinner with Vince. Yeah, I said, he was going all I, sent out. The, I sent the text to Doug and I was like, there, there goes the hole in your theory. And he was like, no, clearly he was telling him to his face that he was going to be. He was being out. an honorable man. Yeah. <laughs> Instead of being loyal to Vince, which he clearly still is if he's going uh, to birthday dinners. 
Which because is a conversation. Cena's been doing a bunch of HBO Max stuff. Mm-hmm. Business Daddy owns AEW and HBO he's, Max. He's anchor is fantastic. I mean, I did not think that I would enjoy that and ended up really loving the crap out of it. It is. I have is, to watch it. I, that guy, uh, he's he is good. He's, he's a, a funny good dude. one. He, I mean, that's a talented guy. I got to see him at WrestleMania 35. That's one of the nice things of. Uh, the actual event was great. Escaping it was <laughs> a nightmare. Tenuous. Yeah. So maybe so maybe that's a, so maybe so if that if that happens, you can all at Doug and be like, oh my god, uh, you are I, right. Here you go. I don't even like John Cena. That's all right. You know, I will like pop it. so hard if that happens. for being like, be he like, hears that he hears that horn. Yeah. <laughs> from the beginning uh, of his music. Could you imagine the pop that, that would get in Chicago? I just donated. Which is another thing I pointed out to Doug. And I was like, well, if they're in Chicago, CM Punk has to be involved with John Cena and CM Punk's history in Chicago. Yeah. So yep. it could work. I mean, but, uh, it, what if MJF hired, what if his, in character, he hired John Cena? <laughs> <laughs> so maybe, so even if we still get, even if we still get uh, Mox versus CM Punk, maybe MJF hires John Cena and John Cena comes and ruins his life. What if this is when Cena finally goes heel? <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> the wrestling world would be in shambles. Oh my god, I would hate wrestling Twitter the next day. I would hate wrestling Twitter, but I kind of want to just see the world burn. It. That's you the I, want the yeah, yeah, you got that straight up choosing burn it down here. deal going on right now. Uh, Doug so is definitely choosing violence. Kat and I recently <laughs> started playing Dungeons and Dragons. Uh, and it's just chaos, like <laughs> constant chaos. Like we were trying to get out of the initial tavern and mm. Kat just kept talking to the bartender, having a lovely conversation about the bartender's <laughs> marriage. And I'm like, oh my God, like this is going to be nuts. And then I got a catapult <laughs> spell and I like blew history. up a goblin's head. I don't know. <laughs> it It's awesome. It's Doug a lot of fun. Wants, Doug wants yeah. chaos and violence. And uh it's true. God, can you imagine? Oh God, our lives. I married chaos. Let's you be did. Honest. You did. You did. And then like I multiply chaos by bringing my partner in. Yeah. So, like, you did. You lots. did it to yourself. Yeah. <laughs> the world is, himself. The world is chaos. It well, is. Being it's true. Yes. You may yeah. as well embrace the chaos and use it to your <laughs> and not the not the new Japan can. chaos. <laughs> no, no, not them. Although I do love them. Yes, same. I do too. I, because someone I know has spoken to Rocky Romero on multiple occasions. Yeah, I Rocky am um, related to Okada through Rocky through my friend. So, oh, there you go. <laughs> as long as as long as Orange Cassidy is in chaos, I'm down. Yes, yeah, me too. Right. I also now that and then I people learned... say that Sue is in chaos because she's chaos adjacent because of Trent. Ah, yes, yes. Uh, I also learned that if Sue drove Orange to, Cassidy drove was Okada to a Wrestle Kingdom. Probably. I just found that out. What was that? Say that again. That Orange Cassidy was Fire Ant, and it blew my... Oh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. Yep. Yeah, um, I didn't watch Jakarta, but I can't remember. Uh, I have a good though. friend who lived in the area, so they would go to the shows all the time. It was him, a couple of my friends They yeah. back in the day, so... It's been great for them. They're hilarious. I'm getting to see Fire Ant wrestle this guy and this guy. And I'm just like, uh, they. I can't remember which of the podcasts was talking about the one guy out there that was so excited about Fire Ant getting well, to wrestle. And, uh, the best I'm like, I know used... him. I know yeah, that the best one guy. The, the, the colony the best... finishers. Yeah, the they use. The, yeah, two. So on Rampage did have something good. They used, and it blew Chris Jericho's mind. He's like, I've never seen that before. What was that? So yeah, and I was like, my friend is the guy is the guy at home that they were talking about going. Oh my <laughs> god, they're using the air thing. <laughs> yeah, when Chris Jericho said that, I was like, obviously Chris Jericho never. I know that Cara. guy. No, I know him. I know yeah. the. I know them. I I know the fan at home that was marking out for that. <laughs> I know him. <laughs> This is very exciting. Yes. Oh, All right. Man. I guess this is a good place to stop. Also, I have my low battery sign is up. Um, well, yeah, I, I would like to, th- <laughs> before we go any further. Oh, yes. Here, please, please, please do that. Uh, I would like to thank Doug for joining us. Yes. No for being just 
thank you for all of it. It's great. It's great to have good open conversations. Yeah. I love talking to wrestling fans. I love rem reminding people that we all are different and that we are all coming together for this thing. And it does make us better when we are being good wrestling yep. fans and together. Like you kept saying, it it should be accessible to everyone. Everyone mm -hmm. should feel safe. Everyone should feel like they can go without it being a big battle. And it just, so many people don't even know this is an issue. So yeah. I'm sure people at DDT and Fight Game Media are going to be like, I had no idea this went this deep. Mm -hmm. It does. It truly does. And it's so such a different fight for each individual yep because what if i was a person who couldn't dial a phone yep that's mm -hmm. how i've gotten everything handled um like it just it, it goes so deep and mm -hmm. i have no problem coming out and talking about my experience and being able to use it to bring attention to an issue that okay maybe it doesn't affect everyone but it affects a lot of people. It does. It affects and it affects enough. more than you. Yeah. I was going to say enough people. Yeah, it definitely and does. And it's becoming more and more common with medicine going the way it is. The disability population is growing and growing and growing yep. every year. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's time to start paying attention. Maybe a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Just a thought. Absolutely. <laughs> but no, thank y'all for having me. I, yeah. I, talk far too much about wrestling no. my <laughs> wife will probably appreciate that i talked to y'all about wrestling instead of her today um because she likes it but there's a limit like, oh yeah oh too I, much wrestling please stop uh, this is why we end up in groups like the fight game media uh so uh if you, yeah. if you enjoy your fight game media uh you can subscribe on youtube and uh you can yeah. also check out the let me uh, do this because I cannot do transitions like Mr. James on uh, <laughs> Zoom there. Just uh -oh. them the best. Yes, but uh, $5 a month for the Patreon Plus. That's where you can check out the Dynamite show where Jeff made the original point that I felt that Sam needed to address. And I think he'll be glad that you did. Yeah. I, uh, you know, but There's just... Good. Uh, it's a lot of you good know, people putting out content. Like we say this every week, you know, there's people who work really hard to bring you content every week and you can access it for five bucks or there's the YouTube channel to subscribe to you. Cause obviously that's where we are exclusively, but there's clips from the other shows on there uh, where there's, you know, we cover there's new Japan impact WWE Joshi wrestling Thanks for impact. <laughs> Those guys are fantastic. That yeah. show you can listen to a good chunk of it. I'm pretty sure. It's yeah. So there's a ton of really good, and this is every I've, week that this content's coming out. Yeah, that, it's that's, we're pretty much on YouTube. There's clips going up, I think every single day. <laughs> and we are crazy these days and I love it. Cause everyone <laughs> is a lot of fun. And, yeah. um, and if you want to talk wrestling more and nerd out, join the um, fight game media Facebook group. Uh, it's, Generally speaking, a group of very cool wrestling. Yeah, I don't. There's never really been problems <laughs> that we. I mean, I have only seen like two issues that have had to be moderated to the point where we asked a person to tone it down. And so that's, that's pretty. So flying too close to the sun. Flying too that. close to the sun. <laughs> so all right, we better wrap this guy up. Yes, but make sure uh, next week we will be live. We will be. That's, thank you. Excellent. Yes, we will be. We will we will be here after uh, all out. So if John Cena shows up, you can come talk to us about that. I was MJ, gonna say I might crash y'all's. Uh, I was gonna say, and then, then we well, might dial Doug in for a couple well, I'll minutes. Send you, we'll, I'll send you. I'll send you the link, and <laughs> we'll have you pop in on. There and we've a got couple minutes. Uh, and then if me. MJF shows up, maybe we'll see what similarities to the dream I had about him coming back a few weeks ago. I actually have um, a little bit of a thing on that because uh, he, we do believe that he is going to show up and challenge and i was like and my friend said and then uh that would be, mean that the january show which i think is like winter is coming or, or Revolution, december yeah the december show is but i was coming. like i was like there would be snowflakes he could be wearing a gray suit so that this was the details for my <laughs> dream of, back of you where MJF watch back <laughs> yeah watch where back. mjf i'm gonna have to end up clipping that if he comes back we'll, we'll get there <laughs> If but yeah, happens, so anyway, we are definitely is, going back. We'll be we'll be live next week. Uh, we're gonna probably try to find out how to use the super chat thing. Um, you do yeah. 
uh, we'll talk to you. So come chat with us live. And then if you're mean to us, uh, you can pay us $25 and we'll read it on That's the air. The <laughs> That's been our, Ooh. the meaner it is, the more the price goes up. I we're talk about mean stuff for We're going to do the Ticketmaster <laughs> slash um, yeah. getting a picture with a wrestler thing. So the meaner it is, the higher, the the higher you have to pay us to read it. Yeah. No. No. Yeah. And we can't guarantee a, we'll, we'll read it. We can't guarantee market for saying angry things on Powerbomb. We can let, yeah, willing. and we can let, um, and we can let Paul answer, or we can let, there you go, <laughs> let Jeff answer. There you go. You can actually, we'll we'll see what their threshold, their bottom lines are, and there we'll, we go. we'll go from there. So what what are you willing to read it? I mean, tweet for. Yeah. All there right. we go. <laughs> so I'm gonna wrap this thing up. So for Sam and Doug, thank you guys so much for joining us. This has been a lot of fun. Yes. Definitely, we will have Doug back just to chill with us and talk. And uh, thanks for thanks for being with. The yeah. Podcast. Thanks for listening, and hope you have a good week. And come hang out with us live next week, and come chat with us live. Have a good one. Bye.